Hello and welcome to the Velveteen Lounge. <laughs> made it, made it, made it, made it, made it, made it. Whew. As you oh can see, God. if you're watching the rebroadcast, because if you haven't tuned in yet, then you're not watching this at all. Then uh, obviously I'm still doing some prep here because I was just mentioning that people don't necessarily understand what goes into making one of these broadcasts. <laughs> I think I Hi, think, Gettysburg man. I think our first guest here does because she was yes. instrumental. To, first of all, she's done it. She was also instrumental in, on our 24-hour live broadcast with a, a, a couple of long mm. sections Hi, Dime. of business, which really helped the thing to work. So, oh in God. the meantime, here Hi, we go. Hi, Eric. And <laughs> achieved. So, This is a are. crazy week. Crazy, crazy, And crazy. it's only half over. <laughs> so, anyway, I'll just, I'll just say that. I make no Whoa. apologies for not oh being 100% prepped because Ava, I can always yes. do that behind the bar. Ava! <laughs> we have Ema behind us. Uh, any rumors that hi he, julie good to see you any rumors that uh, emo was not actually ema and was actually amy or complete bs oh her. gettysburg ma'am thank you she was actually peruvian yeah uh yes julie i'm glad you're here because julie inspired me mm -hmm. um last night we saw a brand new broadway show well it actually hasn't even opened yet it's in previews called stereophonic and it's about a band that's suspiciously like fleetwood mac <laughs> Um, doesn't seem too much in the like recording studio. Mac. Hi, mom, and hi, no, Peter. It, it really, it really does seem too much like Fleetwood Mac. This is, this is they. It's very funny in the recording studio to make their like 1976 album, actually 77 album, which does sound suspiciously like rumors, and uh, all of the things that happened between the two married couples and the guy whose marriage is breaking up. Boom, big fun. But anyway, um, the great thing was while we were there because we were in a preview sort of thing for a very special price, we got swag. Well, actually, it was free. So. Yeah, this was, <laughs> that was a special price. That was a very special. Hi, price. Lisa. I'm good to see saying. you. <laughs> but I was thinking, like, okay, well, we could do like '70s bands or whatever. But then Julie had a great idea about the eclipse. So, and hi, Errol. Good to see you too. So, um, there we go. We have mainly have eclipse drinks tonight, but we'll see where the uh, you know where, where the, the conversation whim takes you know us. where the conversation goes. You start about uh, solar astronomical phenomena, and then eventually you end up talking about the Crimean War and electromagnetic theory. And I'll I, probably I have, talk about music. I have a good idea for a snack, but I, God's honest truth, we're probably not going to get to it because not tonight. I mean, I'll definitely send it before the eclipse. Um, but yeah, this this week, man, <laughs> no joke. Yeah, let's see her. I know that's um. Oh yes, that bag. Um, spoiler alert does fit a record. <laughs> so they did a good job with their swag. Check that out, record fans. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. I think I could use. Hi, Dan. Good to copy see of you. Of the Sun version. Wow, and hi, cool. Susan. This one's been through the war. It's one of those blue capital jobs. A play I, called Quadraphonic would be even better. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be twice as good. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, John. Good to see you. Says, go with Captain Quad. Oh, Eric oh, empathizes. Yeah. Oh, Big fun. So these will probably be available at the show. I actually, is Dan's here? Yeah. I, I remember we sending to the, the Hi-Fi <laughs> Club that, uh, you know, we saw the, the marquee for this thing when we were seeing um, Kimberly, Kimberly and Campbell. Campbell. Yep. And I was like, oh, I took a picture and sent it to the Hi-Fi Club. And then this started this whole line of jokes about like a show that's about Hi-Fi. <laughs> With songs like Mr. Bowers, Mr. Wilkins, and all that, the <laughs> Warfare and Twitter. Hi, Cooksville Co-op. But this will probably be at the, uh, you know, at the vending if you if you do attend the show, which is long, intense, and actually quite rewarding. So there we go. Peter said, with the eclipse coming next week, I say time for a cocktail. I Peter, said have a cocktail. I couldn't <laughs> agree more. Peter, I frequently agree with you 100%. Hi, Kalaka Boy. Good days. to see you. Anyway, I'm still Oh, we should start out with an RIP to Count Floyd. Okay, Count I did not know. Count Floyd. I did not know One that. One big hit in the 70s, but probably a lot of uh, RB hits. Speaking of the 70s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was well, it, all right. Was that Count Floyd with Groove Me? Am I getting that right? Any, any music fans? Hey, you sports fans. Which, which, which are delish? Yeah. Oh, Olive Garden beignets with raspberry sauce. Okay, that sounds oh. good. That sounds delish. I remember one uh, day in New Orleans while we were attending the uh, Tales of the Cocktail in 19, uh, 19 yes, no, 2017, 17. not 1917, 
Uh, there was no Tales of the Cocktail in 1917 in New Orleans. There was just Cocktail of the Cocktail. Anyway, we're turning Tales of the Cocktail. Thank you, Dime. We had that infamous night with all the tequila, and I was like, oh, boy. I get up in the morning. I'm like, you just go ahead. I'll get there. And I got there. Peter says, let's raise a glass to Joe Flirty. Joe Flirty. Flirty. Didn't we see that in last night? What? At the uh, bar when we were actually having a Yes, yeah. we did. Joe Flirty. Who was Joe Flirty? We did. Good to know. Anyway, so yes, there are there the are bar, The bar we were sitting at last night. Oh, AKA Count Floyd. Okay. That's right. Count Floyd. Okay. okay. Oh, from SCTV. I'm thinking of a different Floyd. King Floyd had the big hit. Got okay. it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Got we bar. were sitting at a bar last night. Shock. I know. And yeah, um, the Irish exit went in. So, uh, and they have like. A, after giving a little kudos to, to some guy named Flaherty. Well, of course. There you go. Well, they yeah. have train times. Like, they have a, a big board in their bar. They have the that clicker times. board like they would used yeah. to have in the train stations, right? And then and that came up on the board. So, got yes. it. Got Paul's it. Paul's okay, wearing one of my favorite shirts, Eric says. Hey, Jesus. I, got, I have this a is, space dress up. This would look so good on you, man. I mean, if you can find this fabric, we can probably find you a seamstress to set you up. In yeah. 3D, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, put on your put on your red and green glasses and take a look at this shirt. Whoa, man. Okay, well, Depth. Stereo. I, I can't wait to make this one, so I'm, I'm yeah, not going to wait. I'm going to make it now. Leap forth. But I have to find. Tight leap. I have to find the right kind of shaker. Right, one I'm that gonna, matches my dress. I'm going to make one big peel and two small peels, and it's got a peel. Okay. There we go. So. I'm going to bust my junk. That's what I'm going to do. My, that is my uh, let's get organics. Serious. Let's get which serious is, for which a is moment. to say. Can we get serious, please? Can we get serious for a moment? Yes. Yeah, um, Are you serious, Bob? No, as you, as I'm sure I'm sure you know where this is going. Mm. Now we're serious. Okay. Oh, and drinking tea from my Ralphie Tiki mug. Yes, I hey. saw you got that. I love it. Yes, I love that mug. Okay. <clears throat> serious oh, so. for a moment. Okay. My first drink of the evening, which I will explain in just a moment, is called subconscious impulsiveness. Mm, that's a glittery glass. Anyway. <laughs> and. The reason I have called it subconscious impulsiveness is because your favorite cousin and mine, Glendora, does for patron Patreon patrons who are at the box wino level. Box wino. Every week they get either a horoscope or tarot, tarot cards, cards or a horoscope and tarot combination cards. Of the two. Combination of the two. So Christmas, been, they got an angel she'd card. Been telling you know the I mean. tarot for a while, telling angel cards. She'd been, she'd been reading the horoscopes for some time, at least a year, maybe more, probably two or three years. Oh, no, like, more, yeah, probably more yeah, like three 15 years. 15 years, I don't know, 35 okay. years. Anyway, so she's been doing all of these horoscopes, and occasionally she will get one that will say something real fun. She used to just read them for like, now that she's doing tarot cards, she just looks at the horoscope and says, okay, it says this, and then pulls out some tarot cards to see what they say on the subject. But when she was reading horoscopes verbatim, she got a fit of the giggles that lasted for <laughs> no joke about a half hour. <laughs> it took a while. And she could down. not finish getting through that horoscope because she was laughing her ass off. What did it say? It said, this week when the moon conjuncts Uranus. I still can't say it. I was, so, I, was, I was actually saying earlier that, you know, when the moon conjuncts Uranus, your your general response is, do I know you? You know? Excuse me. Cakes were the scariest. Ah! No. You know, anyway. Uh, <laughs> okay, hilarious. so. So. Oh, anyway, what does happen? Still can't in, say it. What does in fact happen when, okay. the, when the moon conjuncts Uranus? So Uranus? apparently, when the moon conjuncts Uranus, at least to subconscious impulsiveness that really or anxiety, like depending on who, who you ask. But sorry. So the name of the the official name is subconscious impulsiveness. Haren. <laughs> the unofficial <laughs> name is when the moon conjuncts Uranus. <laughs> So, you know, the, the moon was actually conjuncting Neptune at the time, and it's like, that's not really funny at all. No. No. But when so, the moon conjuncts so Uranus. So it has to be Uranus. Sorry. So, when the moon conjuncts Uranus, have aka you, have you heard subconscious types, impulsiveness. Some astronomical types actually pronounce that Uranus. Oh. Like, that doesn't sound any better. Or I've heard, like, yeah, anyway. No, it's Uranus. Seriously, Uranus? You know, Uranus You're not going to take that away from us. You're not going to be able to say Uranus. There is no way that to make it sound good, you know? So, you know, 
eighth, seventh planet, ninth, eighth planet, blah, blah, blah. Subconscious impulsiveness begins with two ounces of vodka. And how often does subconscious impulsiveness begin with two ounces of vodka, I ask you? I think uh, subconscious impulsiveness frequently ends with two ounces of vodka. Come to think of it. <laughs> oh, boy. It's, they took Pluto away from us. They can't take the ninth planet away <laughs> that's from be, us. <laughs> that's going to be my next drink. They took Pluto away from us. The way you pour that booze. I had to name my next two, drink. Three. But now I'm going to call it They Took Pluto Away From Us. They took Pluto away from us. Ah, I love that. Away from us. Yeah, they did, didn't they? And who are they anyway? International Astronomical Union. Sounds like right. some sort of like, you know, globalist John communist thing. John didn't name thing. my second drink. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Okay. Hilarious. So. Yeah. You know why? Because Pluto is bigger. <laughs> is, is basically sort of a small moon. And it's like. Yes. Not really any bigger than all that other junk in the Kuiper right, Belt. So me. they're like, here we go. Hmm? When the moon Boom. conjunctions, that's some more. <laughs> so I was thinking, um, and when I had stuck in my head all day. Conjuncturing us, uh, that's <laughs> some more. <laughs> so um, I've had stuck in my head. When the moon conjuncturing All I can think of was the Simpsons with that uh, yo-yo display. <laughs> with with the, the, all the laser lights and it's just like it's it's straight out of the 70s it definitely precedes oh the symptoms but it's hilarious oh time <laughs> time had a colonoscopy last monday oh geez so the moon really did it really did conjunct it really did conjunct uranus yeah seriously oh taught our grandkids what the starship enterprise and toilet paper have in common they both wipe out clean lots of around uranus. <laughs> oh no what was the one that i remember hearing <laughs> They both cruise around Uranus looking for Klingons. Yeah, it's like, it, it, no matter how you tell this joke, it doesn't get any less juvenile. And this, I think we're just, we're descending from like fifth to fourth to second grade to, already. To quote, as we go. To quote someone I have worked with on and off, um, <clears throat> she, um, like me, is um, sometimes amused by very stupid things. And she, we were working at a carnival this summer, and she saw a little toy that just cracked her up. And she's like, "Yeah, I'm 12." <laughs> so I have to say that I'm 12. Okay, so what two 12? ounces of yes, two yes. ounces of vodka. I used upstate vodka from New York, and a half ounce Wild Arbor Clear Cream Liqueur. As you can see, it's not actually creamy. No, it's creamy only in the in the consistency, but it's not uh, not, hi, it's not milky. It's not milky. Good to see you. Here, I don't. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Errol had not heard that version. Can you imagine if we lived on Uranus? Save Uranus. Save Uranus. 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 Uranus Day. <laughs> I mean, it just the joke. We're getting to, down to like kindergarten here. Before I you know, know it, they'll I'm be pre 12. preschoolers going, hey, hey, hey okay. duty. You know. Ooh, I did not get. Did you get orange bitters? I need to get orange bitters. Orange bitters. Okay. Okay. Hold if on. you want to. Load us up with other bitters, that would be fine. And you get the blue, oh, that's good. Okay, yeah, just making sure, folks. I'm trying not to interrupt this drink too much. But okay, I'm, so. I'm thinking about uh, vodka. If your state makes vodka, well, it does. Buy it. Local product can be beat. Okay, so half ounce fresh lemon juice. Yeah, it seems bad, right? Yes. I'm about to be juvenile again. Okay. Three, three dashes orange bitters. That's not the juvenile part. Let's see here. What what kind of stupid sound effects can I add here? Oh, yep. Now you're talking. Oh, okay. We're talking about Joe Flaherty moments. Oh, when he played Peter O'Toole in The Man Who Would Be King of the Popes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Peter had one too. Remember when Joe Flaherty and John Candy were movie reviewers? They would blow, blow up movie stars. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pardon me. Yes, Eric, behind us. Okay, so, all right. I've got all the ingredients except I want just a few drops hey. of blue crochetta. You a couple are. of, just a very few drops of blue curacao because. Yeah, we're just going for an effect here. Hello, Good Bill. Moment. Good Wednesday. Bye. Uh, hopefully, all this rain that we're getting, you're getting some of that too because of dryness where you are. Although, I think you've also been. It's alternate being, alternately been dry, too dry and too wet where you are. 
<laughs> Make up your mind. Mm-hmm. Here it's like we're just flooding. It's just crazy. Okay. We've seen like so, we were just out, out on Dolson recently where somebody was sweeping water into the drain. Yeah, it got moving along. Our, our street. Well, I think they were like trying to the remove street, the clog. From, one street down from us got flooded. Yeah, it moved the clog from the uh, the drain there because okay. it was just totally so you know leafed up. One drop. Uh, Sylvia's asking if we're going to add water. Hi, Sylvia. To the vodka bottles, so Dad can't tell that we stole some. <laughs> 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 this is definitely the I don't ju- think my parents ever had a vodka bottle no. so I didn't have to test that one juvenile out. section of the show I would have had to do that with the gin bottle and after a while you know they'd start to tell it would start to be very thin I might need more but we'll have to see that oh, was literally two drops of blue cross so great. Uh, rain yes we're uh, we're getting a lot of we're getting a, a biblical flood it's just and recently it's like every time it rains it's just like oh four days worth of and it's just all down all down I'm like yeah. All right, whatever. Whatever. But okay. for Pete's sake, it's just hey, I have a little sun Pete's here. here. Oh, Pete's here. <laughs> for your sake. Hi, Gene. Can we have some sun? Oh, there we go. Hey, Dave. Hello, Gene. My oh, they've been, oh, my gosh. They've oh, been my... flooding there as well. Getting from you. Jeez. Yep. Yeah, oh, there were two clubs of very loud thunder today over the house and a minute of rain, wind, and back to sunshine. Oh my gosh. Okay. We need some sunshine because. Big fun coming through. Everything's waterlogged here. Don't you love the weather? Oh, the like wind, that? I know, John. I know that you, whether you're talking New England or whether you're talking Texas, the great thing about the weather is if you don't like it, wait on for 15 minutes. That's the cliche. We don't have any chilled glasses, do we? Yeah. Oh, oh really? Do we? Curve your thumb, Nave. Let's see. Okay, look, I got to see what it looks like, though. Check it out. Because put another one in there while I'm at it. I'm about to be now like it needs a little bit more blue. Mm. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. More Back blue. to the drawing board. Back into the no, 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 shaker. No, just, yeah, go. It's it's an inexact science. It's what it is. It's what it is. All right, I tried three more. Bing, 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 bing. Hey, Bobby. Good to see you, my Hi. friend. So good. Yep. I'm telling you, okay. that's the kind of, so this one is, this is a kind of a special function. Do you want a little color? And it should be good. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, oh well, my gosh. Well, Bill, we're, we're reporting floods, not uh, only uh, locally, but in, in Pennsylvania. Okay. And regionally, yeah, that's a pretty big swath that's cutting. I think all over New England, various places are getting socked in the jug. Nope, needs more. Nope. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. Well, going to be here for a while. <laughs> you know. And that's a, it's all part of the experimentation, folks. Because if yeah. we make it and it's wrong, we'll be like, get it right. Get it right, Hinkle. You know? Because this isn't blue okay, food color. I think color. we're up to, no, this is blue carousel. Yeah, so it's not but, as concept. If you use blue food coloring, two drops and done, I think. So far, I'm up to 10 drops. 10 drops. So, and so. Then? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to know until I pour it into I don't a clear know. glass. Still kind of fail. Son of a leash. Maybe you should just crank it. Another ten. No, if I crank it, it will be ruined. You don't want to ruin it. It'd be ruined. I do not want to ruin it. You don't want to cover it in ruins. And I'd have to drink it and start over. Ah, jeez. The things we go. The the the. What am I trying to say here? The uh, the travails we go through on your behalf. So you don't have to. You don't have to make the terrible drink. Uh, we will make the terrible drink. And if we do cocktail roulette and I look at it and I say, it looks terrible. And I make it, and it is terrible. Guess what? This Saved you. This is not going to be a terrible drink. No, this is going to be good. Uh, we're just trying to get the color. Right. That's all. Wow. Oh, hopefully Friday the sun comes out. Amen. Peter. Yeah. So, uh, you know, oh, Joe good. and Shy is getting rain, snow, cold, and mizzou. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's, it's was clamo. Yeah, the ends you go to for our down. amusement. I had like there two different is. seminars today. I was just running around to stuff. Boy, oh, boy, oh. There it Long is. Long boy, oh. Okay, I'll hold it up. Don't don't worry. <laughs> You're going to see it. I'll hold it up. The end you both go to for our amusement. Hey, it's, so you don't have to. <laughs> it's the color of Uranus. <laughs> color of Uranus. That pretty much is, isn't it? Just, it is. Yeah. It's the color of Uranus. I believe that uh, Uranus, that, Uranus, however you want to pronounce that icy it, blue. In juvenile fashion, is uh, and Neptune are both this this sort of pale blue green. <laughs> Your best save was keeping us from making the tinsel teeny. Oh, God. Well, you know, oh. 
and I, I'll say it. I'll say it, I've said it before. I'll say it again. The Tinsel City one was was okay. atrocious. It was a really bad idea. And then she dumps it, and it's very great, very good drain cleaner. And she makes a Tinsel Tinny too, and that sold it. One of these days, I'm going to have to take a look at that video. It was like a Star Trek drink. Right? Tinsel <laughs> too, not a bad drink, man. So twenty drops. Okay. It does look it like does. a Star it Trek is. drink. You've achieved that color. It's that extremely <laughs> pale blue doctor. that looks great with the light coming through. It. Lovely. There you go. It's the color of the rainbow. Yes, and people, uh, the obvious answer from the audience is, how do you know the color of my anus? So, anyway. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it looks yeah. like I coordinated with my dress. It really does look that, that stuff out. <laughs> you ever been picking up some of the color of my shirt over here? Looking mm. good. I'm telling you. Anyway. Yeah, you were talking Mikhail, about... Mikhail, hello. Good there to go. see you. Excellent. Yeah, we got Bobby Joe. So, yes. Bobby John. So. Oh, person turquoise weaving. <laughs> <laughs> Big fun. Oh, Definitely. The 10 Ford from Next Generation. Oh, wow. All right, I gotta add I'm got to think about the bar from Deep Space Nine where 20. all the like, degenerates hang out. And, like, you know, you can sit there and buy some, like, uh, bootleg gold uh, platinum from uh, from our, our local Wheeler dealer there. What do you think? I'm going to show you for a random price. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, I actually used to enjoy that show. I thought that this, the, the scripts on that were sometimes, yeah, but sometimes they really nailed it. Like, they actually were well done. So, and I, I do like the idea of uh, like space being a little decrepit. It's like Dark Star. Yeah. I, yeah, I awesome. go for that. Great I'll film. take Quark. Yeah, Quark. Thank Kalaka you. Kalaka Boy. Thank you. Funny thing. Okay. Did you put away the rest of the hidden eggs or did Paul look for them after the stream? I didn't Neither. find them. They're still hidden. They're still there. <laughs> he has not found them yet. I, if, if I get so inspired, I may, I may go for a bonus egg from last week because we just had our uh, Easter Sunday on Sunday and uh, see if uh, if I can find another because there are six more five five more out five. there five more out there somewhere and it's in one these two rooms mm -hmm. both have them you know what was picked up trouble you, with troubles <laughs> you know how many are in each room at this point hmm. I know two are in here okay which would be for sure. three in there, or... There's definitely one in there that I remember. There are two that I do not remember where I hit them. <sighs> Mystery egg. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The egg is making oh. me think of uh, more Morgan says, Orson. Nerdy space thought I had today. If there are civilian uh, civilizations on other planets, do they have their own zodiac and horoscopes? Why not? They should. One thing is think. for sure. If you're on a different planet orbiting a different star <laughs> out there, and you're taking a look up into the Atmos... The a, the Xmas Atmos uh, after hours, you're seeing the same batch of, of of dots in the sky, but from a different perspective. So guess what? All these cool constellations we see, gone. Eric says you you're should, seeing something. You should else. make a bonus egg hunt video. Because a constellation <laughs> is an apparent confluence of stars which have nothing to do. They're millions, billions of miles away. They have nothing to do with each other. It just looks like this guy with a holding a bow. You know, that's just what the Greeks saw. So what? Uh, but if you're on, uh, say, uh, you know, M562, it's going to look different. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> so they have their own constellations, which would lead to your own zodiac, which would lead to your own telling your horoscopes and cross my palm with silver. <laughs> and we'll tell you all about that. Throw some, throw down some tarot. Speaking of a mean tyro, I like the way he pronounces that, although it's wrong. I need to make a thing because here it is. You do. 824. Um, it's a four over there. Anyway, eight twenty-three. And well, it says three here. What's in my hand? What's in my hand? Mm. Anyway, I'm gonna try this again because hey, know, just to make sure. I don't know. Do you want quality control or not? I felt like I was controlling the quality just fine on my own. Well, jumped on what the hell? I tell you, <laughs> Kenny Ringman says I hate hiding things because I never remember where I put them. My last move, I found two hundred dollars in a shoebox that I nearly threw away, thinking it was empty. And I don't recall ever hiding that cash. Well, that's fun. <laughs> that's a, that's a fun day. That's a, yeah. that's a good day. You know, I guess the lesson there is quite clear. You got a box. You don't know what's in it, <laughs> mystery box. Probably Open it up. <laughs> death and taxes on any planet. <laughs> yeah, probably. There, there will never be taxes. They, there will everything dies. Uh, mm -hmm. I can tell you about the, the most fun thing that I ever found in a box that I opened up, which, again, oh. was on the street on the upper oh. east side of Manhattan. Oh, it was inside a trunk, and inside that trunk was a box. And inside that box was a manila envelope. And inside that manila envelope, which was labeled squirrel, was a squirrel pelt. 
No, I didn't dig it home. Yes, I said, oh, and put everything back. That's what you get for. That's what you get when you take a look at a mineral and say squirrel and say, what's in here? What do you think is in you here? Get for going through the it's trash. labeled. Not that I don't go through the trash, but yeah, I do. you take your chances. I do want to see that uh, that manila envelope that says you're winning uh, publisher's uh, clearinghouse entry. That's what I want to say. Uh, Errol says we found a 20 I was using for a bookmark years wow. later. <laughs> it's a great idea. Yeah, that is so funny. Big fun. I sometimes like to hide like $5 bills and Christmas ornaments when I put them away for the year. So that when I go to put it up the next year, I'm like, look, a little gift from the past. Anyway, dang, dang, dig it, dang, dang. Um, should I do that in this one or in the metal part? Metal part's easier to strain. Just saying. Truth. That little emoji that says truth. Okay. Put this guy back so. here. Oh, give me some ice, baby. So what are you doing? So I think I'll do. Do we have names for these things? We do have names for these things. You have so not we, named them. I I had named them. No, Let you me didn't. see. This guy was going to be blackout. I'll make that next. I'll make the other one first. Okay. There you go. I gave you the name of the drink already. Uh, and what's the you know, first big, one? Big secret ruined. First one I haven't quite named yet. See, you didn't name it. Yeah. Okay. I did the one anyway. Uh, we'll call this. Uh, what do we call this? Drinking three for Angry now. Red Planet. We'll try that. Yeah. This. We'll see if, if it turns out red. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. That's a fun one. Okay, so anyway, we're going with a shot of vodka. I'll take that vodka, please. And uh, we'll take my middle. My well, we hardly way. ever use vodka, but we're Pony making it for shot. it tonight. You know, I don't use vodka a lot, but I think it's suitable for these drinks, because they don't need a lot of flavor from uh, this business. Yeah. I want a little bit. I want a little octane. It's fun to hide money. Pump a lot of tain down in New Orleans. Oh, Julie found fifteen dollars in the pocket of her winter coat from the previous winter. That's fun. I looked in my the a coat pocket the other day because I was inside pocket. It was empty. I, I like finding fifteen dollars in the pocket of the coat that I thrifted from the previous owner. Oh, <laughs> no, that'd, that's be, a big one. that'd be nice. That'd be kind of nice. Uh, uh strain through Leslie. Half an ounce of the lemon. Okay, there we go. And I'll take those cherry bitters. So half ounce of lemon. Lemon melt together again. That's about half. Deal or no right deal. There. Deal or no deal. <laughs> Might never find it again. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> That's okay. Fine. Yep. okay. So that was one and a half ounces of vodka mm -hmm. and half ounce fresh lemon juice. You'll see where I'm going in a, and... with this in a minute. And I'm actually going to stir, not shake for once. I, I could shake this, but I thought it's so simple. It just needs to get cold. That's Hi, cold. Doug. Day 13. Hey, speak will, will you stop making that infernal noise? I'm gonna, Doug says, when I put repair parts for a project in a box, but it takes so long to get to it, I sometimes just order another set of parts because the time to find the original parts is more, more valuable than the replacement box. I feel that way about a lot of things in this house, actually. Uh, you, know, you know, my problem is I will put, I don't have a problem with the parts because I'll put them in a, in a little tin that I'm intending to build something in. <laughs> And it's labeled, so I know what the hell I'm doing. And then when I check the schematic, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. But then I'll <laughs> actually take something apart, put the screws into one of those little, like, uh, cups. Uh, I'm actually using, uh, I think, yogurt cups, actually. They're kind of perfect. And then I'll go into another project, and I'm like, where do these screws go to, anyway? And then and then when I find the parts, I need to find another boat anchor to repair. <laughs> right? Yes. Done. Sun Ra. Right here. Sun Song. Delmark. Boom, baby. Hello. Good record, too. A lot of fun. I think it's a reissue, and who the hell cares? Blah, 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 blah. Remember that short lived game show, Treasure Hunt? I do not. Do you? Hmm, no, I do not. I don't remember Wizard of Oz either, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. Well, I, I don't think I watched it. We have an album with game show themes. That's yep. how I know it. Hey, treasure. So I'm going to strain this into said cocktail glass. I'm going to put another. Oh, you put another one in for me, too? Oh, wait. You got two in there. Oh, okay. Straight into your cocktail glass after a vigorous stir just to get it cold. And that's actually quite a nice bit that I didn't bring in the soda. Or unless you did. No. No. I'll get the soda. And I'll get the other soda. I don't know where it is. Oh, it's out here. Uh, it's keeping cold. I could have gone. Oh, well, I, it, I'm already locked. I'm okay. Mmm. Yeah, we saw Sun Ra Orchestra, correct? 
Do you see that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. In Central Park, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there would be. I did. I saw. John and I saw the orchestra on a number of occasions. Ah, John says I don't have that one. Oh. Heliocentric Worlds, Volume Two. Heliocentric. It is uh, Sun Song. Sun Song. We do have Heliocentric Volume. No, I have Heliocentric Volume One on a record, and Volume Two on a on a really cheap CD, but which actually sounds great. So obviously they just got the masters and went to town. But it was very inexpensive, and I was pretty happy to get it. Uh, volume one, I've got uh, Monoral on ESP. Great, really great record. Oh, Eric says my favorite game show theme, Card Sharks. I Card think sharks. we have that. Yeah, I think we do have that's it. on the collection. Yeah, and fill with Dr. Brown's Black Cherry Soda. Now the Black Cherry Soda is probably going to make this turn more red. And look at that, it is Angry Red Planet. There we yeah. go. Boom, boom, boom. I decided to go the soda route. Ah, because, I got to see them too. You know, yes, fantastic. Well, isn't Marshall Allen still alive and leading the orchestra? I think he's like 99. Am I wrong? I'll try this. You know what? I forgot the bitters, and I need to give this a stir. I thought you were throwing a tantrum there for a second. No, I just went here and they bopped the bottle, that's all. <laughs> the bitters is good because I want to take the sweetness down a little bit, too. There we go. Two dashes. Give us a try. Ah, doctor. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're not going to stir it. Okay. I'll just leave the bitter sort of clouding, just like the Atmos of Mars. Oh, it's pretty good. I pretty like good. it better than I thought it yeah. would. Uh, that was black That's cherry really soda. Black cherry. And guess what? So dark browns should be available in your local ah. supermarket, but around this time of year, notice that the caps suddenly turn yellow on some of these. I just saw these today. I'm like, you know what that means? If this is a kosher product and it has no HFCS, it's got sugar. Wow, how about that? <laughs> kosher Dr. Brown's. Well, Dr. Brown's is served in your local deli anyway. Peter says, I myself have fate in a pleasant mood from Sun Ra. I love it. Oh, yay. Carol says, I remember the days in the Navy when guys would get in arguments over, it's called soda or pop. Oh, I know. <laughs> I've always called it soda. You, but... you know, Errol, the obvious answer to that one is, Guys, it's called Sodi Pop. Duh! Sodi Pop. Moving along. What the hell? <laughs> Unless you're in Atlanta where everything's a Coke. I'll have an orange Coke. Wow. I'll, have a, I'll have a lemon Coke. Marshall Allen pushing 100 years <laughs> old. Is it still running the band? It's still running the band. It. It's still running the band. That's what I thought. Oh, Dime. Uh, He's just Dime so says I can only really get it. Um, Dr. Brown's here by the single can. Oh, wow. Hi, Jennifer. Good to see you. Jennifer says in Indiana we called it soft Sucker. drink. Sucker. Oh, my God. I love it. That sounds, that sounds like a, a prohibition we era soda where bit I of terminology from Indiana there, which, you know, was like a, a very staunch uh, woman's Christian Timbers Union state, and nobody drank a drop during prohibition. Wait for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, she's, I should say Southern Indiana. Okay. Southern Indiana. There we go. Yes. <coughs> up, up there near the highway that's going to lead you to shy, they might call it something else. Yeah. Oh, I see, Eric. Okay. Bingo. Got it. Okay. And there's the sub, sub wedge, wedge hoagie, hoagie grinder. grinder. Yeah, it was always where you are. a sub to me. In uh, in New England. Yes. What do you call your your? It's it was submarine mostly sandwich. a grinder, but I, you definitely heard hero, and you you could also in very specialized Ooh. parts of Eastern Massachusetts you might hear uh, I think Spucky. Which was a, either the deli or the the Spunky? name name of the of the bakery that made the bread. Never heard Spucky when I was a kid. It was always a grinder. I've never heard that until today. Grinder or hero? Hero sounds like it's just a, you know once yes. again sort of a mis mispronunciation of a gyro. Was it Bo what? Boylan's? Yeah, that's we can get that. Yes. Boylan's we can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Boylan's actually is is using sugar. Oh, that's nice, Don. They do a black cherry and they do a root beer and they do uh, ginger ale. It's all with sugar. So you know if you don't like the contrived sugars in your sodas, then you know <laughs> check those out. And some people are like, I don't drink sugar in my soda at all. Then go with the diet product. There you go. In the submarine capital of the world, it is a grinder, we like, Doug says. Like yes. Groton, I believe, where you got that, an electric boat. That yep. makes sense, you know, because grinder. he was not far from there and always called it a grinder. I oh, yeah, actually, never heard that. You know, the other thing is that you would hear uh, oh. you would hear those long rolls were torpedo rolls. Peter says I heard that elsewhere. Dover Plains, New York, they call them grinder. grinders. Grinder. Kind of depends on like what, what people wow. are doing. 
Fago. Mm. Oh, there you go. That's a pretty regional soda. Not to be confused with Fanta, which was simply, once again, Coca-Cola Corporation saying, oh, wait a minute, you got all these other soda flavors here. Why don't we make those? So suddenly the uh, soda fountain there has flavor. all of the Fanta flavors. You got the orange, you got the grape. We I, suddenly have Fanta, I guess, because it's owned by Coke. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like the, the flavors are showing up. Dime, Jennifer, she's over on Facebook. Bingo. Yep. That's from Southern Indiana. Hello. Yes. Uh, where exactly? Maybe, uh, you know, Mr. Dime here could uh, trans, uh, triangulate where, where things are. That's interesting. If if you want to say, you know, I'm not telling people you need to cough up hers, but the ancestral <laughs> homestead, you know. Daryl says, Lisa got onto me for drinking all day at the lake. I said, all right, Carrie Nation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, jeez. Oh, like... Did anyone know somebody related to Carrie Nation? We did. Yes. And we still, well, we, we, still, still we still know her a bit. Yeah. 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 She, yeah, apparently, yeah. She, apparently she, Carrie Nation was a distant relative. One of those things. Hilarious. It is to be noted that all of that agitating from <laughs> the ladies back in the day, and industry was was still staunch, and they Carol, were just like push on, it'll just, blow over. Just about got his bleep <clears throat> whipped. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's to be noted that like what pushed prohibition over the top was not, unfortunately, not the ladies. They were working really hard, but they didn't have the vote. You know, they didn't actually have the political power. They were doing a lot of agitation. But once they interested some 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 powerful lobbyists. Some guys got into it and they're like, that's it. We're going to push this thing through. And they did. Oh, Dime. She lives in yeah. New York now. Yes. So, as yes. a matter of fact. She's, but she's from, yes. Yes. She's from not, Southern New not York. Not particularly far from Jennifer, we're we talking about you over right on YouTube. Now. I believe I believe you are 65 miles from us exactly because that's like how I clock it when I get to Joe's. Yep. So other Joe's. Joe might be here. But Joe is here. Not when I want him to say. Joe is here, but Joe, Joe number two is not here. It's like Devo. Bob one, Bob two. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ah, the pizzeria in Dover Plains. They do nice have a candy. nice candy. I've heard of Dover Plains, but I'm not sure where it is. Do you know? <laughs> Dover Plains? No, I don't. I don't exactly know that. I was hearing um, recently in a conversation about sort of like the World HQ for the... I'm looking it up. I'm mapping it. The Jehovah's Witnesses is not where we think it is. We think it's our backyard, but I think it's actually in Westchester somewhere. Uh, but we have a we have a stronghold back here because they they always come to the door. Dover Plains, New York. I'm, I'm mapping it right now. Dover. Let's crank out and see where the heck we are. Oh, boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Oh, it's not like, far. Oh, right from near us. Uh, Connecticut. Yeah. No, it's not. It's, a it's not far. Near Millbrook and all that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that looks like very pastoral part of New York State. Got it. Yep. Yeah. That's actually okay. that's totally got it. Right. Got him. Looks like pretty much straight shot east from Poughkeepsie until you get to Connecticut. Yep. yep. Got it. Good stuff. Yeah, Elliot Ness, uh, you know, there's that, that thing in the movie, The Untouchables, which is actually a pretty, uh, pretty fun picture from the 80s. That, like, you know, once they get to the end of the picture, and it's, just, it's like 1933, and it's just like, hey, Mr. Ness, now that prohibition has been repealed, what are you going to do? He's like, I think I'll go have a drink. <laughs> That's the thing. He was doing his job as long as it was, but, you know, once things were done, they were done. <laughs> Doug says, I came across a Fom Temperance Society pledge card and thought it might be worth resurrecting the FTS, the Sohana. There you go. I know there are people the who Lord, do not partake. The Lord, and the Lord, face drum. You know? And if they do not want to partake, they definitely should not. They should not. We know people who really have an issue, they shouldn't. And we know people who are like, I don't like it, I don't like the taste. And they're like, so, so don't do well, it. We had a friend yeah. who didn't drink. Yeah. And he said, he was like, thank you for not giving me a hard time about it. Like, what? Why would we? People are giving you a hard time about it. What business is it of theirs? Well, anyway, it's, whatever. It's, hey, it's like people asking, uh, you know, Peter, who does his taxes? He's Hi, like, Mike. None of your business. <laughs> Mike is here and says, I'm not so much for a sub, but I do like a nice meaty Reuben. Reuben. Yes. Hey, yeah. Stacked about that high, that kind of Homemade thing. Homemade Reuben's for St. Patrick's St. Patrick's Day. Day, baby. Yes. Uh, you know, because I'm not a really big fan of corned beef and cabbage. I think, eh, it's okay. But I tell you, the actual salted beef, cabbage, and um, cheese, uh, Swiss and Russian dressing combo, toast that sucker. Yeah, that's pretty good. Although I, I do prefer the pastrami. As a matter of fact, so I'm, I'm with you on the Reuben, not oh. so much the corned beef. Dime, that's like Elvis. Yep. Dime says my parents rarely drank, but they kept a fully stocked bar for guests. For guests. Hey, that's, that's a wonderful thing. That's nice. 
Yeah, apparently he was just a real gracious host, and he's just, ah, I don't like the taste of it. Um, he, he enjoyed cigars, though, so, you know. Uh, he didn't like the taste of it, but he had a thousand pills a day. Pills. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but he was just saying, I got some good bourbon over there if you like it. So I say he just he knew that if people were interested, there you go. Yeah. I also think that if you were on his entourage and you were having too many, he'd be like, yeah, you got to get out. So that's the thing. Be polite around Elvis. Yes, Eric says, I don't drink to go blotto. I like different flavors and spirits and know my limits as well as how much to, how much eat. to eat. Yes, the... that is very important. Oh, boy. John says, my mom cooked corned beef in a pressure cooker. Talk about dry. Wow. Dry. Oh, my God. Very dry. <laughs> Arid extra. Oh, Gettysburg <laughs> Mam says, we had a debate here just today about chipped ham. Chipped ham. Chipped ham hoagies oh, are wow. quite popular here, but apparently not so popular in other parts of the land. Where Are we getting into a unique that. food product, a, unique to sort of southern Pennsylvania here? Because I think if you want to get like around Philadelphia, you've got that whole thing with, <laughs> with the, um, what am I thinking of? The um, cheesesteak. You get the whole cheesesteak thing. And they're also very proximate to Trenton, New Jersey, where you get that whole thing with the uh, Taylor ham. So I think that oh in gosh. Philly, you can probably <laughs> definitely get a Taylor ham sandwich. And I don't know what they're calling it, but it's, yeah. Mikhail so, says, Bobby John keeps a fully stocked bar for me. <laughs> I love that. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, my mom says, your dad gave me my first drink, rum and coke. Rum and coke. <laughs> I think the first thing I ever had that was a mixed drink was rum and coke. I was in Germany, and I don't know what the hell to order. We had license to do, and I was like, I don't know. And the guy says, get a rum and coke. So I did, and it was like, it was Ooh. sweet, and it didn't taste like anything, and it wasn't very impressive, but I was like, okay, so that's a drink. Blah, blah, blah. It, Eric says, my niece gave me a Jack Daniels peach wine cooler. This peach wine cooler. <laughs> yeah. Um, the first person who ever gave me a rum and Coke, it was in a, like a tumbler, and it was like rum. that much rum and like that much Coke. Rum? Coke? Yeah, I think somebody I was not, trying a fast one. I did not. No, you threw it in his face. Bobby says my, my folks only drank on days ending at Y. Bingo. Ah, Diamond, so funny you would say that. Since I'm the weirdo who would drink eggnog in July, Guess what? too. We happen to have the eggnog handy because, as we've mentioned on these broadcasts before, I was reading in an old book that eggnog is traditional on Christmas, New Year's, and Easter. Easter. We didn't oh. whip it out on Easter, did we? We did. We did. You had some. Oh, yeah. After I woke up. <laughs> Bingo. I might have fallen asleep. That's very Easter, good. I but... still like the dark browns. They've really got a good flavor profile on that. But... Oh, Peter says in Montreal, I had a martini, my first mixed drink. I love it. Hello. There you go. I think I remember the first time I tried it. Dean's to... brings it back out for Easter. I've never heard of Dean's, oh, but okay. I love that. Okay. okay. That's great. That's great. Uh, I remember the first time I ever had a martini. It was not good. It was pretty terrible. And I think that the balance was off and it was like just too Colored much. Colored eggnog. Too oh much God, removed and it was, uh, it was not quite cold enough. And it really brought like breaks down the fact that martini, you got to get that a lot drier than then you might, although ver people don't really serve it very wet these days. And you got to get really, really cold. That's really critical. Otherwise, it's like, yes, this is terrible. I love that. So. Dan says colored eggnog should be an Easter thing. Hello. I love that idea. Oh, yeah, pastel colors. Big fun. Like, we could do that right now. Oh, Eric says Frangelica was a winter drink for me because we always gifted an aunt and uncle with it every Christmas oh. and have a bottle for oh, ourselves. So nice. Frangelica's good. Well, you know, it's a fun bottle. It's a presentation bottle. Green eggnog it's and ham. <laughs> celebratory. It is an. It is like a flavored, like a liqueur. So that's a big one. Cadbury cream Cadbury eggnog. eggnog. We can do that. Oh boy. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think I need to talk to my nutritionist about. We that. need to get out the. Whoa. Sweet. I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it. Sweet. Do you want some eggnog? Yeah, sure. All right. Is it in this fridge or the other one? It is in the big fridge, as a matter of fact. I'll get it. Take a look behind stuff, I think, in the center. I try to remember where things I'll are because it. it's a little crowded in there right now. Okay. We have uh, three quarters of a turkey, which we had frozen for um, 
some years and I decided I got to cook this thing. I can't have this thing hanging around the freezer forever. <clears throat> so we invited a friend over and we cooked uh, for once in a long time Easter dinner. And I remembered why you don't really want to bother with Easter dinner uh, if you don't have a whole ton of people over and people to do dishes because it's the same exact amount of work as Thanksgiving without the long weekend. Uh, yeah, well, with that, luckily enough, I was actually, you know, working from this office uh, the next day. So that was okay, but it's still just a ton of work and we're still cleaning stuff up. It was good. I had some turkey sandwich today. It was really good. Take a look in right hand part of the uh, pantry center. See, I remember these things. At least if she finds it, I remember these things. And if uh, if she doesn't find it, then clearly I don't. Boom, boom, boom. Coteron is, that is great all year round. Yeah, they're, they're th seasonal drinks are interesting. Yeah, we, t we were talking to a bartender, Lower Manhattan at one point, and he was saying, well, you know, New Yorkers drink seasonally. And in the winter months, they turn towards the brown goods, meaning your, your whiskeys, brandies, uh, Añejo tequila, perhaps. And then you get towards the spring and summer and people have turned towards the lighter goods and it's back to gin and tonic and it's back to vodka, vodka tonic and vodka soda. Or you might go towards, um, what else, the light rum drinks, your daiquiris, et cetera. And I got that. You know, your lighter sours make more sense than your heavier sours at the end of the year. Uh, although, basically, people in Manhattan will be drinking Manhattans all year long and martinis because, hey, that's the thing. I will say that the, the rules of drinking are, are simple and finite. As always, I remember a friend actually telling me, oh, I got a, like, uh, he was talking to a, a, a great uh, voiceover artist named Jackson Beck, who was like, you know the secret of drinking? And then he had to think about what the hell that was again. But I think that the big secret was that every other drink is a seltzer. It's like drink water, drink water, drink water. And actually, your total intake should not exceed the, the amount of hours you have to process all that. And uh, <laughs> really critical, line the stomach in the first place. Eat a good meal and then take it easy and space it out. So whenever I say, like, we really don't do shots around here, yeah, shot, 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 shot is completely violating what bad, I just bad, said about bad drinking. Idea. All right, so, I'm going to have some bad, water. Bad, 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 Since bad. I said that, I'm going to have some water. Uh, wrong deal. I'm actually having some Dr. Brown's uh, soda straight up because it's quite good. And suddenly I've got the kosher product. Hello. Okay, you've been following the comments, right? I have not. Okay. So oh, I'm going to uh -oh, actually... go back. Actually, I've just had a few here. Uh... Oh, the remaining eggs in places. Yeah, I got to look into that. I got to think about where I didn't look. I looked over here immediately. Oh, old fashioned. Bang, yeah. Yeah, I love an old fashioned. But definitely. And then uh, Don. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Gordon's did, did gin yeah. glass in the background. That would be Errol's sister's shot glass. <laughs> you know what it is? I want one in this glass. Ice counts you know. as water. I love it. Ice does count as water. That's the thing. This is, there was that uh, the film The Imposters where he like reaches behind the bar, grabs this, and says one martini. You know? <laughs> I think that was Stanley Tucci saying that. As a matter of fact, but this is this is awesome. We think we found that last. Year. Oh, Dime was asking, did you get a chance to listen to that Jimmy Hendrix track? Not yet. I will. I will. Uh, Dime was actually doing me a favor by like uh, mucking around with some of the classics because I'm like this was not really mixed that well in the day, and it's what they had to work with, and it's what they did. But I'm like, you know. What's with these records from the 60s with the vocals in one speaker? Could you center that, please? That's very unnerving yeah. on the headphones. So uh, I'm going to take a listen to that and see what happened. I did enjoy the bit with the doors because I think some fun things happened. And uh, I there's a bunch of stuff. I've done it myself and with pretty good results. And you know what? Easier if you do it. So I'll, I'll name some things. We'll go, we'll go mucking around some tracks, and then people will be like all aghast. And it's like, oh, you're, going to, you're screwing out with Beatles records. I'm going to finish this glass of water. Whatever. I have another glass of water over here, too. I'm extremely mm. hydrated today. It's a good idea. Bing, 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 bing. Where's the spray get to? Right here. Oh, thank you. This is going a, to need it. This is record cleaning spray, by the way. Universal solvent. It takes care of everything. Definitely good to rip okay. your hands off. When we're doing these carnivals and things, oh. I have this around because your hands get so sticky, you know? I know what all those words mean, but not together. Dime says, I can change that whole mix for you if you want to make it in stereo. I thought you wanted it in 3.1 surround. Oh. Well, we'll take a listen and see what's okay. what. I mean, I was just interested to have the vocal centered. I think that it's 
it's not bad as cereal, but right. the whole thing in in the UK that was that whole album was mono. They didn't even bother with the cereal. And later on in the year, when it became a thing uh, in, in the states, like uh, reprise is like, well, we need the multi tracks. We got to mix it for stereo. Okay, so they did, <laughs> and you know some of it works better than others. It's, it's not bad, but this is the record that people know, and people know with that cover. The U.S. cover is the one people know. And you know what? Because it's a better cover. No, I need the spray. I. That, it's right there. That um, and a. How old? That. That jar is trippy. Yeah, you're pouring from a moonshine jar. Okay. You know. All right. The bar. Okay. Now, food color. Food color. You you should have blue. Oh yeah, I'll take blue. Okay. I'm gonna do pink. Yeah, I'm gonna do pink of because course. pink. Because pink. Yeah, these are sticky. It's true. I'm gonna just do one. Prop. These tend to make the, your fingertips See turn like happens. a very dark color. I know. Which oh my gosh! After color. that, we used some for St. Patrick's Day. My my fingers were still green the next morning. One drop. Look at that. Oh, I like how that's that's turning into. Yeah. Let's hello. All right, stir it. All right, yeah, I put, this is this is turning into the put, patterns that swirl around. Oh, there we go. It's very Easter egg colored. <laughs> this is this is like the uh, the planet Solaris. Whoa. Would you like this swizzle stick? I would be glad to have that. But check that out. Isn't that cool? And we got yes. the get the pink and the blue. I stirred mine out. Speaking of your three D glasses thing, I'll take the stir stick. Mm. Colored. Oh. There we go. One drop. Thank you. Eric says, I'm thinking about giving dimes uh, some of the tracks uh, to my alternative cruise piece and have him mm. mix it a certain way. Do it. Do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. John says, I was in Academy Records the other day. Mm. And they were playing a quad copy of Company. Too bad they didn't have the system. Oh, and it's. Oh, it's, man. Oh, How'd you know that it was the quad? That's funny. Um, Concepts on command. You guys rock. All right. Wow, you need. Yours became very blue. Extremely blue. Guess what? My tongue is going to do. Become extremely blue. Hmm. The strength of the is more of the color of your Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> closer to, closer to. But the icy blue of Uranus. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, when you. I'm still again, it's still funny with this, to me. With this creamy liqueur, this make. eggnog gear, I put one drop of this food color <laughs> and it just starts swirling like the surface of Solaris in the movie. Either one of them. I'm like, whoa, mm -hmm. that's heavy, dude. Or like, you know, at the end of 2001, A Space Odyssey, where he's sort of like landing into Jupiter and it's like all of these extremely psychedelic effects are happening in 1968. Yeah. So, <laughs> Susan says, wait till you see your poop tomorrow. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> because we had a friend who once made a, a this, blue but... cake, which was like probably an entire bottle of that stuff. It was extremely dark blue. And uh, it was it was really good. It was this chocolate cake, and it was very blue, and it was very fun. Yeah, like and, then the, velvet cake. and then the next day, I was like, oh, whoa. You know, I, I, told, I said, <laughs> you know, um, don't be alarmed when, yeah. So. The original Solaris or the George Clooney version? I have seen the original. I've not seen the Clooney, but I, I got to imagine either. they did something with that. And I'm thinking, look, the, the planet surface in Solaris, the planet surface in uh, on the in the, the planet that Barbarella lands on about the middle of the movie looks like that. And then like uh, 2001, there's all sorts of whack job stuff happening. These fun, weird, swirling, uh, Fillmore West psychedelic effects. Oh, Big yeah. Fun. Eric, you should do that. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's remix let's remix let's remix <laughs> and we got dano here dano is quite familiar with the mix and the remix oh, mine's pink it's not going to turn my tongue black no it's going to turn your tongue quite red let's see uh oh look at that <laughs> yep <laughs> how embarrassing for you i'm not opening my mouth again it's all broken <laughs> <laughs> but i knew that would happen it, it'll wear off probably Oh boy, and we're still getting some juvenile laughs out of uh, that whole concept. I will be is... getting juvenile laughs out of Big that fun. until the day I die. He <laughs> said, so "An idea of a tiki version of Moments in Love by Art oh, of Noise." Okay, hello. I look forward to hearing that. I really like when people do that, and uh, I've actually been enjoying that whole concept of the mashup for a while. Sometimes they're not that inventive, and sometimes they kind of nail it. 
But, you know, just take two things, crumb them together, see what happens. Sometimes it's really, really good. Uh, so this, the weird thing is, like, the eggnog is making a weird pattern on the glass. Yeah, look, look at, at that. that. Like, very strange, really strange. Ooh, strange swirls. Uh, liquor will do that. Well, it's it has a little those, creepy, actually. It's sort of like lines under glass, like if you have a you know hundred proof is, alcohol. That's a little, it's yeah. a little weird. I'm not gonna look. I'm a little weirded out by it. But definitely, uh, and I'm thinking about what's the other one I'm thinking. Oh, way back in the day, if anybody remembers, Plunderphonics. That was like one guy's project to muck around. He kind of like <gasps> invented the the mix, uh, not the mixtape, but the uh, the mashup. Tan says, Back I was years. dying to release ceviche and quadraphonish, but wisely gave up. Oh. Well, you know something? Yes. If Hang you right if you are coming up against brick walls on that, you can always talk to Dime here because he can mix in the surround sound. And you want to put the audience sounds in back of you? Not that hard in 5.1. But at the end of the day, all that is. Plunderphonics, yes. All that is. John Oswald, thank you. Yes. Thank all all uh, you know, all five point one is is a classic. Um, Sansui a QS four channel surround with an added center channel. That's it. That's all it is. Oh my gosh! Eric says I matched up monster scene with Grover monsters. Monster in my mirror. Monster in my mirror. Oh my gosh! Does the eggnog make the drink heavy? Well, this was just eggnog. Just eggnog. So yeah, um, it, it doesn't make it any heavier. The blue color does not make it any heavier. Although it makes your tongue turn. Ah, yeah, I literally colors. did one drop of the pink food color. But... One drop of the blue is pretty heavy. Yeah, the green would have been pretty heavy too. Time says, I can't fully mix yeah. into Dolby Atmos yet, but I'm getting mm. the software eventually. Right now, I can only do up to 7.1. Again, I know what all these words mean individually. Otherwise, it's solid. Well, right now, you've got, ready? Count them. One, two, three, four, five. And no subwoofer, so that's 5.0. Oh, I was going to say, zero. because I I can count the speakers. In there. I, knew, I do know what a speaker is. That's all <laughs> like that means. I can count the number of speakers. In Why don't we have a subwoofer? Because I got 15-inch woofers there. I don't need a sub. Looks like a tong war. Misnomer anyway. Whoa! <laughs> Mixing up a tong war. <laughs> okay. Go. So, I have a good, I well, John gave me a good name for my second drink. They took Pluto away from us. <laughs> now, I have to search on Pluto, not Pluto TV. All right. Our favorite dwarf planet since 2006, it says, I'm trying to find, okay, I got to decide what color I think Pluto is. Pluto is a, a hodgepodge of colors. Red, Pluto? blue, white. It's kind of red, white, and blue, honestly. Pluto is a, a desolate rock. Well, it's, but it's a desolate rock with different colors. What colors? There's no colors. Red, white, and blue, I'm telling you. What? Who the hell? Look at these pictures of Pluto. And tell me that's not red, white, and blue. Now, blue is a colorist. Although, if there's some frozen, uh, you know, water there, then possibly. Oh, it's kind of pretty, actually. That's better than I thought. Cracked, frozen, and tipped over. New clues from Pluto's past. All right. Anyway. Take Pluto away from, from us. us. Okay. Wait. So, okay. Eric says, sorry if this is a stupid question, but you two vodka fans at all. Yeah. I mean, like. I, I, have, tips, baby. I have nothing against vodka. Let's no. put it that way. No. Would you have a, a vodka martini over a gin martini? Oh. Question. Me? Yes. No. So there's one thing. There's one I was going to read Satellite's comment. She says, wait, I just checked the theme for tonight's lounge gathering, the eclipse. Are you two going to travel to see the totality? Sadly, no. No. But we'll see the Sadly, partiality, no. and if it gets cloudy, we'll see the, the zero-ality, which you usually the happens last in the East Coast. Eclipse, it got, it was overcast, so kind of the sky turned brown for a minute. 2017, we did not have overcast, and it was a partial, and it was actually pretty cool. It was... I remember the sky turned brown. Yeah, and uh, I remember was... the prior that are that actually hit New York that was, looked like anything at all was around two thousand. No, no, nineteen ninety six maybe. And I remember walking no. out into eclipse light and thinking it was pretty cool. Ah, Errol got his steps too. Yeah, Jen all the way. Thank you, Mike. I did. yeah, I don't have anything against vodka, but it just to me like I just like my liquor to. Taste 
more like something. And vodka is, by definition, not supposed to taste like anything. So By legal definition, it shouldn't taste like anything at all. We have some vodkas that actually do Dime, taste like something. Dime says, honestly, so. I only find subwoofers I enjoy when I'm watching a movie. I don't prefer them with music because I feel my speakers do, do a, a good, good enough, enough job. job. Okay. Yeah. Peter says, does PV make plain speakers? Not amps, but speakers. I believe you can find those powered know. speakers from PV that you the DJs use, and uh, they are reasonable enough. In fact, we have a PV mixer, which is a lot better than I thought it would be. So... I would probably uh, take a look in the satellite. Are you traveling? <clears throat> are you are you going? I'm, I'm interesting. very interested. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, okay. Dime says it's supposed to be pretty good here, at least in Indiana. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. It depends where you are. Like the pollution, I doubt I'll see anything. Oh, Dime. <laughs> in Los Angeles, we saw <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Oh, Mikhail. Mikhail says, Bobby John has been picking on me for taking the day off work for the eclipse. Oh, come on. Oh. It's fun. <laughs> Please. Uh, oh. You're absolutely right. The last Too time, far away in Idaho. The last okay. time that I was in a cubicle, uh, the, the last time one of these things happened uh, New Yorkish, I was in a cubicle, and I decided I was going to get out and take a look at it. <laughs> More word salad. Yep. Doug says, tactile transducers go well with the live channel on the surround sound. LFE. I know what all those words mean individually. They corrected it. Low frequency, oh, was it L low frequency enhancement? <laughs> was it? My last total yeah. eclipse was with Bonnie Tyler. Ah! I was kind of wishing we had it. that record this evening. I knew somebody yeah. would. I knew somebody would. Oh, Mike says my cousin in upstate New York is on the path of totality. Okay, Hello? that's got to be a lot further upstate than Well, us. how upstate yeah. is upstate? Because we are not exactly sitting on top of Yonkers here. I mean, we're actually a little further up in Orange County. I mean, also... I, I will a, not be home I'm Monday. I'm going to take a look at oh, this shoot. thing. Oh, shoot. I was thinking I'd be home Monday, Rats. but I will not be home Monday. So. Oh, we had the one in 2017. Okay. Why am I not? Why am I going to the city? I'm going to miss stuff. Well, I can like isopropyl alcohol smells like. <laughs> isopropyl should not be on your list of good things to drink. Yeah, this is this is good. Not drinkable vodka. This is, this is from New York. This yes. is upstate vodka. Made from apples. Made from New York State apples. Uh, you can make vodka from anything that will ferment, and when you crank it out at 195 proof, it tastes like anything else. But you cut it down to, to size, and it's supposed to taste like something neutral. This stuff actually has the essence of what it was made out of. So they're kind of violating the law to make this stuff. They took hmm. Pluto away from us. They can't take Pluto away from us. No, that's the name of my drink. Yes, they I know. They took Pluto but... away from us. They can't take Pluto away from us. I'm just trying us. to... I'm... Keep talking. I'm waiting I will. for inspiration to strike. I actually finished singing, and I probably should have kept singing. But anyway, so yeah, that's. Um, the... Oh, that was the original name for Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. Eclipse. Eclipse. Okay. There yeah, I, I feel like you must have Dark Side. Uh, we the we have we do own Dark Side itself, and wait for it, wait for it, Dan. Yes, we have it in quadraphonic. Um, I thought about putting it up here, and then I. Completely forgot. If you'd mentioned it, I, I would have cranked it out and people could have seen the SQ logo. Oh, and of course, but yeah. Bobby yeah, John's going to make a cardboard fort for Mikhail's doing that. Oh, that's so sweet. I love that. <laughs> oh, hi, Marty. Good to see you. Marty says there's a copy of Police of Synchronicity, Synchronicity? at the Salvation Army in Middletown. Okay. You can sell that? I can sell that. I should go over there. I, I was over in that direction today. I didn't stop by. I was oh. kind of busy. I just don't see their vein is is usually so terrible that I'm like I'm not that inspired. But every once in a while they get good stuff. Of course now their price is tripled and I'm, I wouldn't buy that for that price. So we'll get it. I'm but, gonna I'm gonna go hunting. I will take a look. Yeah. Eclipse of course is one of the tracks on the dark side, which was mixed very specifically with surround sound in mind and is one of the real standard bearers for such things. Although there are other albums out there that do it very well. If you want to talk about the first album from Chase, John's still here. Yeah, that was remixed into the uh, the Columbia system. That's a, that's a real showpiece. Okay. Uh, Santana Abraxas, that shows it off very well. Raiders Indian Reservation, yeah, that does. Um, Janis Joplin Pearl was actually done as as a quad rec. That's actually that's quite good too. And I'm trying to think what I've heard. Oh, anything from Enoch Light and Light Brigade. Oh, it's craziness! Absolutely great, great, great surround sound stuff. Yeah. Okay. It's not just Pink Floyd. 
And in terms of like spacey artists, uh, I've got, I was listening recently to, I think, Return to Forever and Wait, what? Mahavishnu Orchestra. And like that is like real space rock. Yep. It is King of Paint. Oh, yeah. Do you know how many different spot on this song today? Do you know how many different album cover versions there are for Synchronicity? Oh yeah, there are vers- uh, variations on that. Doug I says, don't know. Doug says Walmart is selling digitally remastered Dark, Dark Side. Side of the Moon. Okay. Well, Walmart's been doing the records and they've been selling them. Hi, I Dina. Mean, Good to see you. They're all like twenty-five bucks, but yeah. It would be pretty groovy if someone hosted a hi-fi club meeting in quad. I think we could hmm. make that happen. Captain Q has done it before and can do I, it again. I, I like a party that comes to me. <laughs> well, you know, I, uh, I will. Oh, you know, I love yellow. I'm not going to lie. I love yellow. I, I will tell you, Dan, uh, okay. I can do all three major systems, although i got to complete my uh, my SQ no. to make it work properly. And once it does, let's talk because you, you need all three on hand to do everything. And you actually have the equipment on hand to play the RCA system already. Uh, I mean, the, the, you've got the, you don't have the decoder, but you got the rest of it. That's the one that needs the funny cartridge. Uh, your cartridge can handle it. So, and I'm thinking of what else about such things. Well, these days there's all sorts of things happening in various surround systems, SACD. Uh, 5.1 and all that, and you you can mix perfectly well. I've seen some people take the old quad tapes and put them into like uh, um, Dolby Stereo and you just decode it on your DPL2. And I, I've tried it and it's like pulls it right out. It it is it's absolutely perfect. Works just great. Things that are really heavy separation usually work really super. Um, World's greatest jazz band did two albums on Project Three, Rolly Squad. Uh, they're really great records. And I enjoy those a lot. They work very well in surround sound. So I don't know. I do this stuff because it's fun. It's funny. And it doesn't cost me too much. I'm not paying big bucks on some obscure Taiwan pressing of Pink Floyd. But uh, I will. Uh, I paid a reasonable dollar for a really nice copy of Dark Side. I need to go. Okay. Years catch ago. Up, catch up. Oh, a great space themed album is Jammy Strikes Back by Roots. Radix? Bruce Radix. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, All right. I get a sneeze and I need to get my bitters. Hold on. I like space themed yeah. records and I like yeah. spacey rock records. Uh, in terms of surround sound, I think, you know, what worked really well was um, Hot Tuna did, I think, three or four albums that way. Um, Yellow Fever and. False Alarm. What was the other one called? The one, that, the one with the, the detergent box. Actually, it's got some really great space rock, okay. and it's just like, okay, this is total trip music in surround sound. They took Pluto away from us. They did, damn it. It's going to begin with two ounces of vodka because why well, would begin. I, why would I shake up the why theme blue? when we've come this far? Eric would like to hear no no two one five in quarter surround. I think there is definitely a, a, a surround DVD on that by now. So you could look around and find that. You need the equipment to play it back. Oh, but yeah. That's a mixed. great album, John. Yeah. World's Greatest Jazz Band Christmas Album. Yes. That's that's an excellent recommendation. When we when we get to Christmas, which is a mere nine months oh off. Where were you today that had 4th of July stuff? Uh, Coles. He sent a picture from a store that had their 4th of July stuff out. I'm like... Suddenly it's 1960, and it's like, whoa, I'm, I'm jumping forward about four months. What's going on? To... April, May, June, July. This well, is only a, three I, months. This is a crazy week. It's still one quarter off. And I, April, please. And I'm very, the next couple of days are a little crazy. So when I hear 4th of July, that sounds like next year to me. Yeah, that's, like, uh, it's. Ohana feels like next year. We've got a lot of stuff to get through before we okay. even contemplate July. I'm okay, so two ounces of vodka and a half ounce of Aperol, if I can get the cap off. We have a, a, con, a comment here that uh, uh, Mr. Dime would pay an additional patron tier for a Captain Quad Audio Tech okay. Live Jack. Oh, my oh, God. Dano, would you like being on that? I think we could talk about such things. Uh, I believe that. Okay. Um, half ounce Aperol. Uh, that Doug would also be able to contribute materially to such a thing. Okay. 
70s were David Bowie's decade. That's where he really, yeah, if you hear his really early stuff, they're trying to make him sound like I took the wrong thing, uh, like Scott Walker. And it's okay. You know, he has some fun songs, but it's not his element. And then eventually he gets around to the mm-hmm. space oddity thing and starts becoming David Bowie. And then I think Man of Soul the World nails it. That's it. That's a ball okay. to the wall rock record. Speaking of you, 70s okay, rock. So records. that was a half ounce That's Afro. A I'm going to do a quarter ounce acai. Liqueur. Acai? Yes. Uh, Peter does have a copy of Piper. I really should have picked up a copy of the English version of that years ago because it's a lot different than the U.S. version. But I was, like, obsessed with the one on Tower, so I, I have that. I think I have two of them. So As a matter of fact. Really? What's it? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, it's it's aging a bit, but it's not so bad. Okay. Eric likes and Enoch Light's Wichita Lineman. Yeah. Well, that's big fun. And a half ounce fresh lemon juice. Oh, I just noticed there are peels back there. Where are peels? Okay, that half ounce peel. fresh lemon juice. Yeah, she do some peels. And three dashes. Fee Brothers Turkish Tobacco Bitters. We got two votes for a Procol Harum and Climax Blues Band. Oh. Yeah, baby. 70s rock. Oh, my gosh. Big box and acronyms. <laughs> well, you know, the um, the big box stores have found that they put records on the shelf, they sell, mm-hmm. and then people bring it home and play it on their thing called Crosley, and it's like, ah, <laughs> mm, eh, why bother? You know, but there are actually contemporary pressings being made that are designed to sound really, really good on your okay. good turntable. Uh, Dan has some of them. I have some of them. Some of them don't cost outrageous money. Some of the things Dan has do cost outrageous money, and uh, what can you say? If it nails it, it nails it. But he's not going to pay twice that much. Do you, oh, Doug, do you need a laser disc player? Do you need some laser discs? Let me know. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, wait. Oh, are oh, we getting fine. rid of our laser discs? Oh, we'll see how we do. You know, I get some things. Please, please, please. Okay. Uh, shake with ice and strain into a cocktail glass. Uh, John, the answer to the question about the uh, world credits is yes. I think it's the second one they did on uh, Project 3. Got a rave review from none other than Leonard Himalaya. Yeah, how about okay. that? Leonard. Oh, I was just thinking about him the other day, as a matter of fact. We always squeeze your own juice. Yes. Do we sometimes yes. use that in a pinch? Yeah. Um... I'll tell you, when you're mixing for a crowd and you need to squeeze like a thousand limes, you're going to want to buy some of those bottles that say, um, you know, key, the, key lime juice. What from some whatever. people do for room crawls and stuff is they use like part fresh and part bottle. If you top it off with about 25% of the fresh, it's it's really um, going to punch the flavor back up. I'll so, take a chill glass, please. Glass, please. Thank you. I don't mind if I do. So, yeah, that's a big secret with the, the room crawl okay. things. Because the fact is, people will talk about the juice and say, well, it doesn't scale up. I'm like, yeah, it does. You're making a sour. You need half an ounce per drink. You it's need such a weird thing half to an say. ounce times 100 drinks to make 100 drinks. I mean, that's it. We've had, 50 we've seriously heard people say, like, you, the juice doesn't scale up. I'm like, here, here's a, here's a container that says 50 <laughs> ounces. <What? laughs> do, 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 pour it in. And the one thing I love about the oh, room I mean, crawls is that when you're using something like four handles of twist. rum, I love to have the big bin and you just grab two handles, pop the top, and you're just like, pour it in. <laughs> people are like, oh my God, what's going on? I'm making drinks they took for a lot Pluto of people. They away from us. You know? Trying it right now. That's what's going on. They can't take Pluto Ooh. away from us. I like that. It's even better than when the moon conjuncts rain. Yeah, I like it better. Let's see what we got here. Mm. So this item. I like mine with the twist. That's very good with a twist. Yeah. Nothing beats That's the three-inch drivers <laughs> on a Bluetooth speaker for listening to 180-gram audio file pressings. pressings on a Crosley or Newmark record player. <laughs> I know what those words mean. You, we own a, a Newmark record player. Oh, okay. Cooksville's saying we want to get it's a, a decent good turntable ASAP and are very appreciative of any recommendations, whether new or used. Well, you've come to the right place, Cooksville. Guess what? You've come to the right place in the right yes. discussion. we got 10 turntable guys here yeah. right now. Yeah, you've come to the right uh, place. You don't have to listen to me above anybody else, but I'm the one on screen, so oh, I'll wow. tell you right off the bat, used, you cannot go wrong oh, with Errol. Thorin's. I've been, we've been running one for 30 years. Errol great says, uh, we actually roasted and ground our indoor-grown coffee beans and had enough for oh, a pot of coffee. No Very way. good. That's great. You grew coffee. That's so awesome. Ah, we, I, I, I don't think we can grow coffee. 
Yeah. Okay, Dan says the organic bottled juice from Whole, Whole Foods. Foods is as good, sometimes better than fresh squeezed. Okay. Yep. I yeah. Yeah. I haven't. Super just quality. Uh, we actually have used the ones. Mm. What's the lime and lemon that we frequently get in the the bottles? About this tall Santa glass Cruz. bottle, Santa Cruz. Yeah. They're good. They're a little bitter, but they're not bad. And then there's the one that's the what's the one in the uh, sounds the, very logical. Oh, dime. <laughs> you the, went there. <laughs> what's the uh, what's the one in the plastic bottle that is the key lime? Oh, the. Nellie and Joe. Nellie and Joe is just a key lime. So that's it's a different mm. lime. It's key lime. You, you can make key lime pie out of it. John says, serious question. Have you but ever yeah. made any of your cocktail recipes more than twice? Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because a lot of they're just variations on variations on a theme. So, it, so it, yeah. It's good to start with. That's a yeah. Thing. Okay, Cooksville is getting some recommendations. Okay. The Tech Dix 1200 is your standard DJ table from back in the day. They made them for some 30 years and then stopped making them. And then uh, Panasonic said, wait a minute, turntables. Now the 1200 is available again for a lot more money. But you can find <laughs> used units for probably around the 500 range. If they're operational and they're rock solid, they, they're absolutely solid on speed. Great, great machine. Sounds expensive. Uh, not as much as turntables can get. Hey, Dan, how expensive do turntables get in your experience? You can go really oh, crazy. Boy. But the thing about the, the 1200 is it's it's really oh. solid. It's pretty resistant to vibration. Diamond's asking. Speed control is awesome. For uh, instance, you can put a lot of cartridges on there. Is the Mai Tai recipe you made last week your favorite version or just a variant? Probably a variant. So what I think. I think we did like the standard recipe. We just used whatever rums we had. Probably. So yeah. not going to lie. That's no, kind of no. what we do. <laughs> that was the end of the broadcast yeah. where things were getting hazy. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I think we had some good amber rum. Yes, it's like different brownie recipes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So like the thing about tables uh -huh. is anything that's made like with that. There's a thing with like this really plastic tone arm and, it, and they all look the same. And they, the ones that on Crosley all look the same. Those are, are you know, you got a stack of old 45s and you want to play them once. Yeah, buy one of those. Have fun. Good night, Peter. You want to play. Thanks for dropping by. You want to play. You want to actually play your LPs and you, they got good LPs and you keep them clean. Ugh, Get a roll machine. You know, ten thousands for crazy turntables. <sighs> stupid, stupid, stupid. Uh, do you get that that much out of it? I think you're getting this much more. Out of that much more it's really like the first thousand dollars you spent that's all and is that too much you can spend I... half that and do fine you know i would say if you could find somebody selling ah. a uh to, to the to the original requester find somebody selling a oh. thorns 125 in operational shape get a good cartridge have somebody install it you'll be set for life and that machine is from the 1960s. <laughs> Bobby so. John says, I still have my 70s stereo system, the best with vinyl. Yep, ours, our stuff is old It works, too. it works, done deal. Doug says, old audio gear is worth paying less Much for. <laughs> I will tell you, you should not have to go top dollar. And then you'll see people putting stuff up in marketplaces. It's like, this is worth bucks. I'm like, you didn't do anything at all to it, and it's 50 years old. Would you sell a car like that? Did you do you think you want to put some oil in it, replace the belts? You're going to need to do some service on it. <laughs> and I see some people say that like, oh, it's been fully looked over by my by my technician, and it's an excellent operating shape. Now you can talk about money. Errol says I need to make my own turntable that speeds up to about a quarter RPM per minute at parties, then see how long it takes people to notice. <laughs> you should do it when they're dancing. <laughs> Well, Errol, I believe you could probably rake up a speed control <laughs> yeah. on a direct drive turntable and just kind of crank it just down. Like and slowly. Like, well, I just yep. shivered and like almost gobbled my drink. It is cold in here. Pretty chilly. Kind of warm, yeah. You know. Of course, the, the classic yeah, thing was if you had one of those idler drive record changes, no. like, like a, a, a Garrard, they always ran fast when you first got them, and they slowed down as they went um, on as they aged because that was the rubber wearing out. John and, says, I got my turntable for free almost 30 years ago. Still works. Hey, where'd you get it, John? Oh, did you? Was Paul involved in this? <laughs> Might have been. It's a great table. Yeah, DJ turntables have speed controls. Yes, Dan they do. Says, yes. They will go up and down about 5%, maybe. Yeah, they're not going to go up a hell of a lot of percent. But I think it would be hilarious stuff. at a party. Just kind of be like. I mean, just kind of like gradually. 
it's it's pretty devious. Yes, yeah, well devious. It's pretty devious. <laughs> Otherwise, if you're buying a new machine, there's that Audio Technica that uh, that apes the uh, the DJ table, the twelve hundred. I know one person who owns that, and she's really happy. I think good. that's probably good until you decide to go out DJing with it. And you oh, Paul got it for it. you. Yeah, that was my original like real turntable. Yeah, I'd had tables before that that were kind of junk, but that one, that one was a really good table. So and he didn't honestly, give you a junk turntable. No, I mean it was. Uh, I thought I don't have a need for this right now, and you do. What happened to the turntable you gave me? Your mother has it. Ah, okay. Got to vote for Project. That's, I think, an Austrian brand. I think we have a okay. phono preamp from Project that I got for about 10 bucks. No, five. I think it was five dollars. Um, there's a contemporary. I mean, if you want to talk like a little more money, BPI from New Jersey, baby, making New Jersey proud. And they are solid as hell. You get a used machine, you get a new machine, they'll last forever. They're absolutely made well. Now, what was the stuff that was in that? audio store that was next to double decker records they had some really high-end stuff they definitely had vpi stuff in there for okay. tables speakers they were selling stuff like harbeth which are great and they're definitely four I figures mean, they were pretty but dang, yeah i mean i'm sure they're like accurate to hell but th th you're going to spend some money on speakers yeah oh dime says no the newer audio technica turntables are pretty solid especially if you're buying the higher end ones, ones. Okay. You think they're good? Okay. I've heard people slag them off, and I think that's probably overstating it. They're fine for home play. <laughs> if you're going to bang it around a club, that's one thing. But if were, that was a great thing about the 1200. The actual <laughs> machines were really heavy. They were designed to take a little abuse. Okay, I'm going to let you read this one. But, okay, Errol, over on Facebook, Doug has some advice. Increase the speed by 45 divided by 33 and 3rd or 78 divided by 33 and 3rd If you're really if you're serious. Really serious. <laughs> <laughs> Big fun. So. Okay, so Mikhail says, 20-somethings uh, seeing a vintage turntable probably got it out of grandma's basement and broke it when they were a kid and now are trying to get top dollar for their inheritance, probably. Yeah, top dollar for a broken turntable from that era, a dollar and a quarter. There you go, pal. My, Have fun. My joke where I'm really not kidding is I see yeah, things. Yeah. It'll show me listings on Facebook. I tend not to troll Facebook Marketplace, although I did get a good deal there recently. But um, he'll show me things, and it'll be like $50 or something, and... No, my, no. my thing is like knock a zero off of that and we'll talk now we're talking you know put us put a line through the zero ah. now we're talking from a probate paralegal's perspective yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> dime says fun fact i sold my last uh 1200 in 2010 so i could have money for ohana oh my ah. god <laughs> oh i i will i always wanted one and the fact is we have one in the basement that needs a lot of work but i i, I found it and I said to myself, this, the tone armor is totally screwed up. We really need to work on that. But I bet if I plug this in, it'll be on speed. Guess what? Plug it'll it in, be, it works just fine. It'll be on speed. Be right on speed. No <laughs> problem. No problems with the speed control. That was totally solid. They're really good machines. Uh, Techniques made a lot of similar decks in the same line. I think there's the uh, the 1500, the 1400, the 1800. They're all variations on that. They're all pretty solid. You can find them. Uh, used for pretty good money and uh, Yamaha made some pretty nice decks back in the day that uh, John has Yamaha mine and like I think that there are some issues which is why I run a Thorns these days but for most purposes oh. fine this is I brought fine. a project for my last Ohana room crawl did not want to bring the Lynn okay oh yeah exactly again Paul Paul gets what this means. Night, Mikhail Night, and Bobby John. Good to see you guys. So good to see you. Those things are tanks. I mean, they're literally excellent turntables. I'm surprised more audiophiles don't use there them. There are audio archives that are like, this is the, the only machine we need. You don't need some $55,000 turntable. This thing is on speed, solid, good cartridge, you're done. $1,000 turntable? Not the most expensive thing I've ever heard of. No, I'm no, sure you can it's go, not. You can go but... absolutely nuts oh on this stuff. God. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. I think you could spend like one thousand dollars in your debt more than you ever need, ever. Seriously. I don't have the hearing capacity to hear 
what makes a fifty thousand dollar turntable worth it you don't have the patience to put up with the amount of bullshit that that is that is involved in that whole project and let's talk about audio cables no let's not no i'm not going there <laughs> anyway next drink next drink you drink all this audio talking to drink i'll still talk turntables there's some other great brands out there um pluto away from us they're trying to orega that's a that's a classic brand they're really good uh, Lynn is still making decks. They're basically based on either the AR or the Thorns 125. They're very simple. They're great speed control. They they have real wood. Pretty nice looking thing. Not long after we started dating, he got me a turntable. Because yep. I was deprived. You needed one. I did. I used it. You you needed to get your copy of uh, the White Lines 12 inch pack, and we never did. I was, I'm still sore about that. I lost my White Lines 12 inch single. If he misses it, we can get it for you. We gotta find it. Dime, do you have a line on such a thing? Do you? I'd love a to white have line. <laughs> Not the <laughs> Melly Mel white lines. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> anti drug song. You know, change this to um uh, to clear vodka, uh, clear rum. Let's do that. The black. Okay. Out. Yeah, let's do that. Is that in here? Oh, I see it. Yep, okay. There we go. All right. Let's do boom. boom. I'll do it. And let's make one called the blackout because, hey, this is an appropriate name for when the moon conjuncts the sun and also for a drink. Yeah. Shot of clear rum. I decided to switch. I decided I'd rather switch than fight. <laughs> okay. Oh, John says, me neither, Kelly. Musicians are known for having cheap ass stereo they systems. Are. I honest, I'm not going to lie. I cannot appreciate a six-figure sound system. We could actually nope. find somebody with it and have you take a listen to it, and you can see what's what. I have heard <gasps> such things, and, and I know there's something going on, and I know that I need to be able to do a rational thing <laughs> in this room and have a sound system. So that's why we do what we do, and it sounds great. Doug says, cocktails taste better in glass was made of oxygen. <laughs> Glass. Oh, that's true. I also don't have the taste buds. This to that. is oxygen. Ah, uh, Dan says, sci-fi woven into your guys' dating story like Elaine and mine is. Yes, he made me a lot of mixtapes. Yep. A Back lot of mixtapes. Back in the day, you would do that I kind of thing. I still have them. Yeah, they're up there. You know what? They still sound great. The time says, Kelly, audio stuff is a rich guy's crazy money dump. <laughs> There's a ton of snake oil and way over engineered <laughs> things. You can never hear anything. But people will pay a hundred thousand dollars on the speaker without a thought. Uh, Dan, I think yeah, oh. Dan has engineered some of these things. No, Dan has engineered things that actually do sound good. I'm gonna let not, him not ridiculousness. I'm gonna let him make his drink, and then we're gonna talk about the speakers up in the attic. Let's we'll talk about the speakers. Okay, so no, make your drink first. Uh, so what is what else is in this sucker? I'm doing a variation on the first one, and I'm okay, going you with the your... clear rum. Yeah, one and a half uh, ounces light rum. Half ounce of the fresh lemon. Uh huh. Okay. So doing you still that. need the black cherry bitters. I do. I need the black cherry bitters on this one. What do you think? With this drink, maybe the cacao bitters. Let's try that. Of course, you want the cacao bitters. Or one of one of the chocolate Here. bitters. Tell me whatever works. Here. Okay. So there we go. Bitter truth. That works. Change that up, please. I'm changing my mind. I, I changed my mind. <laughs> Wow. Silver, I thought you wanted gold. So let's see. That was sticky. sticky okay, sticky. so you sure enough. To be Bitter Truth chocolate bitters. All right, I got to do this then. I'm stirring tonight. I always say I usually shake because I'm impatient. You do not have to shake this, but you don't have to shake a martini either. Some people insist you have to stir a martini. Those people are tools. It's like the people who would buy $55,000 speakers. These speakers that we're listening to over here cost I five. I think they're worth a little more than that. Of course, still. a six million dollar sound system won't sound good if you don't have an equally as expensive room treated properly. That's a good point, I think. A six figure sound system for my ten dollar ears. Exactly, Errol. Yes, yes. Put bread on my table. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Oh, God. So what if I do? Uh, 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 Dan, of course, used to work for, or do you still work for Mark Levinson? Just, there's a name for you mm. in your hi-fi. And we're talking like serious, serious separates. Really, John really says, Paul got you a decent turntable because he knew he'd be spending a lot of time at your place, probably. 
He got Joe a new turntable for game days. He got a Tom Squad because he never misses. <laughs> now I I got her a turntable. Joe bought a turntable. And oh. I'm, I'm negotiating with Tom because the last time I talked to him, I'm like, that's just oh, sad, Oh, Josie's man. eating at the moment. Tom doesn't it. have a table. He's got records. I'm like, you need something to play him on. Come on. Did I hear Kelly Good hinting position. that Paul has a vintage set of speakers in the attic that he wants to unload for a steal at Ohana? Uh, you want a pair of Snell D's? Let's talk. But I, I kind of like them, and I kind of like the, they have issues, but I want to fix them and make them go. <laughs> 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 There's a whole story about these. Yeah. Well, a whole anyway, boring story. Not telling the story and not telling where they came from, but you know they. Um, oh, I'm not gonna tell. I, I'm I not gonna to say. Actually, I was working in a store that sold these, and I actually hauled a lot of those on my back. I am not going. I'm not going to say who you. you got them from. Back. There we go. But I will say. Rain into will, your cocktail glass. We'll tell stories about when we pick. Right now, those this is actually up. Very sour. And we're going to grab. Uh, used to design Mark Levinson stuff. Yep. And writing reports about airplane parts for 20 years now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, hello. Gotcha. Have you been extra busy lately? I'm just saying. Just wondering. Da, 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 da. We're going to fill with the Manhattan Special Espresso Premium Coffee Soda. This Does that is... have caffeine in it? Oh, yeah. I need to sleep. So, ooh, look at that, though. Blackout is Blackout. correct. Blackout. I know I want, to, I want some of it, but... I don't think that another this serious of this. question. Can you tell the difference between a cocktail that's shaken and the same cocktail that's stirred? For me, the main difference in is does it have bubbles? Here's the thing. That question came up on the straight dough. Well, ah, uh, dime says smells. Yes, I will be in touch. <laughs> okay. Let's talk. So the uh, that question came up uh, at one point on the straight dough um, answer column. And the issue was the martini because people go nuts about shaking or stirred on the martini. And the thing is, you could make one one way, make the other way. The major difference is you've shaken a lot of air into it. So you might have tiny bubbles. Is that going to disturb the appearance on the wine? Is that going to disturb the appearance of your drink? Then you have a problem. And if it's not, then you know what? My, the major difference to me between shaken and stirred is I can get a martini on your plate. Twice as fast shaking it. Josie Done. flew into the kitchen and indicated she wanted a pistachio. That's what she's eating. I love it. Oh, that's super oh cute. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Okay, so. Anyway, I'm going to add a twist to this. When we you picked up these speakers. The there we go. I think that's going to materially. They were from. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I like that. Yeah. yeah. See, it's a good thing. The coffee with the little bit of the lemon oil, that really is a, a thing. We'll leave names out of it. No names. But actually, I think I'm conflating two well, let's find out. evenings. Nothing. Why were we at his place? Oh, you're wrong. Uh, that was those speakers. Oh, that was those speakers. Also a lamp and some paint. Okay, I was thinking the paint and the speakers were two different days same day okay so we were picking them Bornish, up yeah. from a very high-end acquaintance who lives in new york city well he doesn't live in new york city anymore but yeah. he did at the time and um so he picked up the speakers and other things and he was his brain was very scattered that night and i just remember he had two purebred dogs that kept pooping and then eating their own poop and then he wanted to demonstrate these speakers. So he put on the film Alien or Aliens? I'm forgetting. Probably Aliens. Yeah. And but he put it on at like what is the highest volume you could put it on? I my head was 11. splitting from how loud this was. And then this was not those speakers he was demonstrating, by the way. There were he there were some huge speakers, and these are some huge speakers. And they're up these in were, our, These were big. He, was, he had Martin Logan's. And the, I just remember. Dan? Like, it was, it was like punishingly loud. Big. Big and then, things. And then. Big fun. For some reason, we brought them home. These other we speakers. We didn't bring them home as Martin no, Logan's. No, we did not. But we no. brought home these other speakers. And they, I think each speaker probably weighs more than me. And. No, but. And 
And then we had to get them up to the attic. It was just <laughs> torture. It was just torture. John, that was Ray. And he at the time was running Paradigm, which are very nice. And contemporarily, he has Audio Note, which are nicer. But I would say I have no problem with the Paradigm. Ah. Those are really, really great. Both James Bond and Paul agree. Yes, they do. They do. They do. I, I would say to my to people who are questioning, they're like, is, is Bond good enough for you? There you go. He insists. <laughs> is this the guy <laughs> that played <laughs> Miles Davis? Someday my prince will come to us. That was right. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, different guy. Different yeah. guy. Ray got into hi-fi again, like, what, 10, 12 years ago? And went nuts, and he's got all this stuff. And yeah, his setup is good. It really, really does sound like it's supposed to. But he really, he auditions, and if it doesn't, like, do the job, he's like, forget oh. it. You know, all those people who are changing tubes in and out and going nuts. He's like, I can't tell the difference. If it works, it works. Done deal. Wait, we were all outside having a fire in the fireplace on a parakeet almost landed oh, wow. on my daughter's shoulder. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm telling you. It's a, it's wow. a good, good idea to have a fire going out there. Mm -hmm. We have a chimney as well, and uh, occasionally we'll hike it up on deck and we'll light up and throw some logs. The logs probably come from across the street where we have a bunch of uh, dead wood, mostly maple. Oh, nice hard wood works great. <laughs> so, and then it flew into our garage, and I'm thinking, oh man, this is somebody's pet. I got to save this thing, so we kept it in the garage, and we got to perch. We got some food. Oh, that's oh. a sweet dime. I love that. Kelly, I couldn't tell the difference between his copy and the TDK cassette Paul taped for me. <laughs> Here's the thing, John. We didn't go A to we didn't like put them head to head, in which case you might have because the someday was probably the one that uh uh I owned that was on mobile fidelity. That's a, that's a nice Paul idea. and I can spend yeah. entire road trips talking about this stuff. Mm. Because I just Please. think I can't tell. I really can't. If you put them side by side and told me, like, I will kill you. Is it you live? Tell the difference. I'm like, or is it Memorex? That's the question. Take I it right back know. to the 70s. I really don't <laughs> know. Oh, that's how we found Josie. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. You're really. Back to your owner and then back from the owner. Oh, jeez. Well, you know, she's been around the block and back now again. Now she's very Spoiled. I know she loves a wine box. Yeah, well, she knew where she belonged, so she belongs there now. <laughs> That's awesome. And yeah, she likes to take a box apart. Oh That's gosh. it. The birds need to peck at these things. Among other things, I, I think it keeps the the beak in shape. So. That's why you have like that uh, cuttlefish bone. Yeah, live from Memorex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely. Radio Shack. Low noise. Low noise. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> On the telephone yep. pole in the alley. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, wow. I love all these so different cool. conversations happening. Well, wow, that's so cool. Yeah, right? the shack used to sell their, like, shinery tape, blah, blah, blah. I love the wine box photos. Yes. But my first open reel player I bought at a yard sale, and then, like, a week later, the folks, like, for some reason, they had my number. And uh, they called and said, that's we have all these do. tapes, too. So I bought the tapes from them, and they're they're mostly Irish, which was a uh, cheap-ass brand sold by Ampex, and then a lot of Radio Shack brand tapes. And some of them are pretty mediocre, and some of them are fun. That is know? creepy that someone you bought stuff from at a yard sale called you. I think I gave them their number, oh, well, my then. number. I think it was my fault. I did that. But Call me if you find any other cheap crap. Call me if you find any other cheap yeah. crap. The fact is that I, sneeze again I, probably, for all I probably paid too much for the tapes <laughs> because I was doing them a favor, and I didn't say, hey, look, <laughs> look I'll, I'll take them from you for half that price. <laughs> oh my god they were trying to make a buck some of these the thing is they were all recorded with like half speed um easy listening so we have this a ton of this stuff and the great thing is to play the, play those at half that speed so it just sounds really draggy it's really crazy trippy psychedelic easy listening music done that a lot of fun three speeds on an open i don't know if it's because it's cold in here or it's a bit chilly it's a bit nippy or um the lack of an air purifier. We ordered a an air purifier, air which is not here yet. It's coming. It's Thank coming. you, Lisa. It's being shipped. Yes. It's but definitely. No joke. I um. It was really really hot Sunday night, so we opened the windows in the bedroom. Cool the place down. And I was so sick with allergies oh, on Monday. Breathing all I cannot time. have my windows open. 
I really like Ugh. having the windows open in terms of the I do too. I do too. It was the only way we could sleep. The but... junk in outside come in is just too heavy. Well, we live so across like the we, street. We got like a full house air cleaner, so I'm going to give it a try and yes. see what it does. We yes. Yeah. So I'm very excited about that. We basically live across the street from like a maple tree a stand of forest. Maples. And I'm allergic to maple trees. They stand of maples. So they're, they're all stooping out there and big, big fun coming in. Ugh. I'm telling you. But like, the I, I probably just took no a look joke. into it and we got, no we got joke. like, we got the Home Depot card so we can pay this off over time. And it's, it's not that much money. And uh, I remember getting the, the water purifier for the, the cold tap in there. And it's just like, oh boy, water tastes good again. So I'm going to try it with the air and see what happens. That should make a big difference. Oh, my gosh. You see it. It also says, I bought a random stack of records mm. for Lisa. Didn't know what we get, but about 60% were very nice. Others we hadn't heard before. I, I like a That's random great. stack. That's great. I like a mystery box. <laughs> I like a random stack of sort of easy listening stuff from the 60s because they're doing a lot of covers of pop songs. And usually they're really good arrangements. You know, Percy Faith, Andre Castellanos, that kind of stuff is. Show can be here. I'd be glad with that, yeah. I think there's one behind you. I could find one, yeah. Elevator going down. Uh, Enoch Light, absolutely. We gotta dial it down. Yep, down there. Thank you. I gotta. Yeah. I gotta get some. What? What was that? I hit something on the way up, and we'll find out where it was later. Not a big deal. Anyway, I saw some of that Dr. Brown's. By the way, stupid maple trees next drink. <laughs> I'll do it next week. Oh, maybe we can. Stop <gasps> skipping the alley. Oh, yeah. John. Okay, so you chose the theme for next week. We'll do allergies. <laughs> Allergens. Allergy drinks. Oh, yeah. So, Dime has a good air cleaner. Yeah, you got to oh, yeah. do that stuff. You got to do these things. It's worth it to have a good record cleaner when you have records. Seriously. What goes up must come down. Exactly. I, I don't say that you should well, get our record cleaner, but if you're serious about it, it's, it's the machine. He has. Yeah. Okay, so he bought, I don't know, a while ago, a little teeny tiny desktop air purifier mm -hmm. and plugged it in for me. And that already made a difference. So I'm very excited job. to get this gigantic air purifier. The, the tiny thing was like a, a sharp image thing that I got at Ollie's for cheap. And I thought, what the heck, why not? You know, it does pretty well. It's portable, too. Oh, okay. Lisa got one, too. All right. Discounted price. Oh, Honeywell. Excellent. Excellent choice. I'm yeah yeah honestly like he's been <laughs> i said that this little air purifier was following me around the house because he plugged it in on my nightstand <laughs> and then like the next morning i got up Plug and then the i found it in the office <laughs> and he's just moving it around for me I thought, I thought that was very sweet she's the one with the allergies we got to take care of that i i actually but, suffer when it gets really heavy i'm like wow that's affecting me too oh the larger yeah. ones with the hospital grade hepa filters make huge difference That's okay yeah. yeah okay yeah, we, good. we have like a three-stage filter on oh. this thing it's supposed to be carbon filter yeah no because i was arc. so sick on the and day carbon and, filter yeah. a hepa filter and i think it's got a um either uv or ozone generator oh john can you not do dairy yeah john says got some congestion maybe from the season but more likely from the dairy i ate last week Oh, yeah. Well, you and Joe have issues with the dairy, yeah, and I think yeah. some people do. If it's severe, you're really in trouble. And if it's mild, then you really you should take, uh, like, uh, like lactase pills to digest that. So that help you out. that eggnog aside, I haven't really been – I've been doing, like, vegan dairy. Mm -hmm. I haven't been doing vegan vegan because I eat meat, but yeah. I, I've been doing vegan dairy. Yeah. And, and I think that makes a big difference. Yeah. 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 I think the stuff we're using is made out of oat milk, but you know, it's pretty good. Yeah. Good texture. You guys are going to be surprised how much healthier you feel in about one month. I guarantee it. I'm excited. Well, yeah. Because like, I found like I was singing better because mm -hmm. I was getting really depressed. Cause like, I just had so much stuff all the time. I'm yeah. like, I can hear Junk it out. when I sing. Oh. Well, you remember when we lived in New Rochelle and you were getting asthma attacks? I do. I don't have asthma. That was like we lived in a sick house three years ago, and uh, I was like, we got to do something. So I went to like we had a sharp image around the corner from work. I bought one of their air cleaners, which was the electrostatic thing. It did the job. It took a lot of crap out of the air, and, and she the attack stopped. Oh, John, yeah, got it. Yeah. We take bee pollen. I've heard that. I've heard like if you do local honey yeah. too, like not that's bee pollen. Not honey, yeah, yeah, but like 
Honey made from plants that are around you. Yes. Yes. That's it. If you do local honey, I've that's heard it. that helps. It's going to cost more. Yeah. It's usually a very good product, and you can support your local apiary. Ha! How often do you get to use that in a conversation? That's your word of the day from the well, research. Our farmer's market does not open until June, but what? there's a honey seller there. Yeah. Yeah. There is. And we can just go to Soons. We can go to Soons, yeah. Yeah, yeah we've got a true. local uh, apple orchard. They depend on bees. But yeah, it's... And they will sell you local honey. It is, again, Yeah, it's as not long as it's honey, but good. unpasteurized. Yes. Got to be raw. Yes. Got to be the real thing? Yes. Got to be the real thing. But, yeah, the allergies, man, they're killing yeah. me. Killing me. It's better now, though. They're killing a lot of people this season. It's better. And for several years now, I think people are noticing that way out of allergy season they're going nuts i think that so that's the stuff i think that the um the rain has helped it just gets some of that crap get the crap out of there and it's like it's as much as i don't like the flooding it's getting some of the crap rain will will tamp it down and thunderstorms will actually the the uh, ozone generation apiary lol fall not often (laughs) (laughs) you know a- apiarist, that's a term you will never hear, but who is your beekeeper? Apiarist? I will take that beer phrase. Oh, okay. Not a purist, an apiarist. Who is keeping your bees, you know? The bees are critical. Without them, uh, agriculture would collapse oh, no. and we're all dead. Dead, I'm telling you. So I, I really am happy with bees. Bees are good. The yellow jackets are really annoying, although they keep the parasites down. So as long as they don't nest on the house, I'm okay. Don't bug them. They won't get bug it. you. Yeah. What about the um, hornets? The brown and black hornets are, are okay by me because, you know, don't mess with them. And they, they will chow down on aphids until the cows come home. So I'm good with that. Eat eat bugs. Do eat really, delicious, yummy crunch bugs. Do we really want cows to come home? Do you want aphids on your plants? No. No. They will suck their juices. No good. <laughs> and yet... Yeah, you'll get you'll get wilty yellow plants that'll yeah, be horrible. I'm like all these little them. buggies need to die, and that's what the parasite that's where the parasites come in. Come on, go do your job. I feel bad. When you see it like Eat. that, buggies. The little buggies. I'm like, oh, but yeah, the, buggies. The little ladybugs are very cute too, and they eat them. They they love yummy really? crunch. Well they gotta die. Yeah, of course they gotta die. It's my plants, but between my plants and the little buggies, sorry, son. Oh, okay. Errol says that's why we don't mow all of the farmland we let wild flowers grow for the bees yes yes yeah we have we have friends who let do that give. yeah they kind of let part of their garden get a little a wild teeniest bit wild yeah they aphids. don't like aphids no they're made to destroy your plants and i think they're also made um uh, there's funny things about them but basically they're made by the billions and i think so you're a feeder animal Okay, I, so you're there for the ants, and you're there for the hornets, and and the uh, ladybugs. Whoever wants to eat you, I'm, I'm down with that. Yeah. Definitely I love the idea of an allergy themed episode. I love the idea of natural pest control. we got to get some, some of that honey. You know, when soil. we're out there and you're getting chowed down by the mosquitoes, I, I want to make a deal with all the bats mm. to say, could you come to the yard and eat one bazillion mosquitoes per night? Go as to town. it doesn't bite me in the neck. No bats don't do that. They eat bugs. Vampire bats. Are the only one who's good. seen Dracula? No vampire bats don't do that either. They will tend to go for other mammals. Am I the only one who's seen Dracula? Fiction, just saying. Bats are great. They're great to have around. I like bats. We love bats around. I don't. Velveteen I don't, Lounge. I don't not like bats. Not nesting in my attic, but yes. I don't. Yeah. I don't not like bats. I would I, build a bat house if I they would go and live in it. Bats fly out there. We also have birds of prey, so the squirrels better beware. And we have plenty of squirrels. Ah. Uh, Lisa says when I mow here in town, my front yard and backyard looks funny because I only mow certain sections mm. and leave areas with dandelions oh, oh, and wild yay. wheat flowers. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. You took, I you harvested the dandelions at one point, and you actually made dandelion uh, tea out of them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you made the, the dandelion honey out of those too, which is really fun. Bats don't bite you in the neck; they just slam into your face. Well, I don't want that either. <laughs> <I'm> just, just like. <laughs> 
Basilated by people in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I just have to say about all of these drinks that you've been serving. Would you like some red wine? I do not like wine. <laughs> uh, okay, Errol says yes. Paul Afra's got to make a living make too. too. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> better make a living Remember somewhere living. else. We love bats too. Yes. Hey, the the as, aphids uh, can feast all they want in the backyard because I never see them on my plants, which means that the hornets not. are going to town. They're all exposed. I don't fence everything in except against the uh, the rodents, but the uh, the the flying insects are just like chow chow. I'm like, eat, Papa, eat. Who likes a skinny hornet? Yeah. They do like to make nests in in women with beehives. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's not big. Not that big. It's not that big. This is not to be 52. It, it won't fit. I'm just saying. It won't <laughs> fit. We sell no wine before it's time. <laughs> Almost on. There is a French champagne. Oh my gosh. You, know, you guys yeah. have seen those, right? Mm. Those. Orson around. Orson Wells <laughs> outtakes the from the. Booze commercials. Yeah. It was the champagne commercials. That was, uh, that was a, no, the it was American Palma champagne. Son. Palma Son. American champagne. We, if you we like our bubbly, mostly Prosecco, because it's a very good product for cheap. He's so. a bat that wears glasses. That's right. Okay, so if, you, boy. if you haven't, Shall your we drop assignment, this on the folks? should you choose, choose to accept, accept it? it? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop we'll a link it. for you. Go Copy go. it. You won't be able to click on it, but... Um, go put it into your browser, and you'll find such things. There you go, first it's hit. It's the first thing that comes up. Or else. Oh no. There's a whole Wait, story so behind that too. Okay, I can just Palma say. Son. Palma Son wine. No, we gotta do the outtakes. You've got to do the actual champagne. Yeah. Original takes. Yeah. The okay. first one has got to be it. Yeah. All right. Copying the link. If you and haven't seen these, rubbing it on you. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> they animated those outtakes using the brain from Pinky and the Brain. I think, do we see that? We should have. I feel like we've seen that. The brain, of course, is, is hilarious. Okay. Copy, <laughs> copy and paste because you the, the link is not hot, but. Pinky, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying this wine and it's terrible. <laughs> I would not like to have it at the rest of the evening. Where is I think Peter had to leave. That's really too bad. He did. We're talking about a little Bordeaux here, and he can talk about <laughs> that. I'm telling you, that's the thing. This talk to, talk to text. Oh. I think you meant thing. Boy, yes, yes, yes. Right. Bowie. You, it didn't even like misspelled thing for you. Bowie, I tell you, what a fan of the neck. I know it so. won't. It really wants me to do that. Whenever I want to send a text, they're like, "Would you like to use an audio prompt?" I'm like, "No, <sighs> I would not." No, I would not place that's the thing but yeah those are hilarious and there, there's actually a story behind that people think that orson was drunk off his ass but the fact is that he had actually been shooting all night and uh, he was like he was just tired to hell and he had taken a sleeping pill which was stupid because he was supposed to show up and do these commercials well so he shows up and he's just like oh you know well fairly functional i will say all of that may very well be true but then he like had a sip of wine and he was gone. Gone, Daddy. Yeah. Well, accelerant will definitely do it for you. But I'm just saying that it wasn't as innocent as like, oh, poor Orson. He wasn't drunk. He was just tired. And it's like, well, I'm sure he was tired. And then he got some wine in him and he was gone. H apostrophe emmered. So, hello. Oh, okay, John. Is this the same link? Okay. Oh, good night, Kitty's room, ma'am. So, so good to see you. Thank Yay. you so much. Yeah. Awesome to see you. We yes. have great, great commentary here talking yes. about this stuff. Yes, we will see you. We're talking to like some, some classic music and talking some classic booze, classic booze commercials. We're talking about people who go out of commercial and talk about how excellent the product is. <laughs> It'll get you really hammered uh, very uh, fast. <laughs> You old get, man you gotta beer watch. You gotta is the watch. only beer I will drink you because watch. it gets you where you're going Copy the on your soap check. You got to watch. Oh, oh, the pinky, oh, the, the, brain. pinky and the brain link. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, okay John, it. I'm going to take a screenshot. The, uh, I the, feel like we have seen this. 
but I'm the, gonna still the, the critic. It's been a while. The critic tended to take the life out of uh, Orson too with regular, uh, yeah, uh, regular uh, frequency. As a matter of fact, yes. So, and I, I'm sure you've seen all of those. And how much did he have? Well, that's up for debate. Like people are like, oh no, he was tired. I'm like, yeah, he was tired and he was drinking wine. Rosebud peas, you know. Yeah, <laughs> he was tired. He was drinking. He's not as think as you drunk he is exactly. Orson came of age during the classic radio and Hollywood era, so of course he was a hard drinking drunk like the rest of them, for Pete's sake. Hard drinking drunk. When he excelled, he made brilliant stuff, and when he didn't, it was like, what the hell are you thinking? But <laughs> the fact is, it was interesting. It was usually interesting. He himself sounds like a complete pain in the tuchus to work with, and like many of them. Oh, the critic, yes. The critic was great. Naga and I wouldn't miss it. It was our ghetto life. Absolutely. Which is also great. Which is fantastic. All I can think of is spewing in me. So. Sip of wine and God. He asked for three glasses of wine on a trip to Brazil. The stewardess asked, you're not going to get drunk on me. I said, no, but I'm going to get some sleep. I'm going to sleep on you. That's like me. Yeah. Damn like, skippy, kid. No. Three glasses of wine is not going to put me away, but it might put me to sleep. If, if I could actually, you know, the, the wine has a tendency to make you a little sleepy, which is better than certain things which make you belligerent. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah. Wine. What makes me belligerent? What's that? Not you, you personally. Oh, wine. I thought wine. you meant not you, make not me you. belligerent. I'm like, I'm. I think I have a very lovely some, personality. Some people. I have a lovely personality. I'm just I have saying. a lovely personality. I'm just say. I don't get belligerent thing. when people, I've had a few. People, some some people do. Yeah, the things. critic was great. Yeah. Just like rosebud, rosebud peas. <laughs> I'm not going to continue that. You just got to go to YouTube and watch <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done. <laughs> done. So the LOL Kelly. I remember being on a, a flight to London about some 20 years ago That ain't good. on British Air. And I got to say, oh, there's yeah. something about flying a class airline. If you fly Air France, Air India, these kind of things, where they'll, you know, we got on the flight and uh, we were in sort of like, you know, like a tourist class, you know, cabin class. And um, the stewardess came up to us in, in, in a very upper class accent. Tequila makes me go nuts. <laughs> ah, boom, 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 boom. A very upper class accent asked us like if you wouldn't mind moving, and we're like, well, what's up? And so apparently they needed some seats, and uh, because they were moving us, we're going to we're, we're offering to upgrade us to business class. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Why the hell not? Oh no, I couldn't possibly upgrade to business class. Twist my arm. So we <laughs> upgrade to business class, and then it's just like you know, here's your meal, and I want to get a good meal with this. Yeah, thing. and they're like, oh, would you like some, would you like a beer? Like, would you like a beverage with your meal? I'm like, yeah, yeah. So, like, that was great, you know, pretty, pretty happy. Ah. Oh, Eric says, this past Easter, I can honestly say that my sister has perfected the art of comfort food. Oh. That is lovely. That's awesome. I am so looking forward to this weekend because I plan to become a lump on this sofa. I'm going to cover myself up with two blankets and watch TV all weekend. Peter, if you could do anything at all, what would you do? I would do nothing. <laughs> Chuck says some people apparently are sensitive to tequila, gin, whiskey, or hopped ales. <laughs> I'm trying to think who that Penguin, is. He's been drinking. Wait, penguins can't fly. Penguins can't fly. He says all of it. Penguins can't fly. <laughs> They're swimming birds. It's true. Heck yeah. Who would pass on that? <laughs> Seriously. That's the thing. I, know, I, right? love, I love that. I think oh, it was what's the like... viewing agenda? Eric, I need to find things that are not culturally edifying and that won't teach me anything i don't want to i i don't want to be taught i don't want to learn i tend to favor a lot of classic cinema food document this weekend food documentary for some reason i'm really fond of food documentary shows and those yes. those shows where they renovate a house without people fighting i'm okay with that um but we haven't watched that kind of stuff in a long time and I get um, my fill out that at the hairdresser. And I could probably watch an infinite number of documentaries about Prohibition era because they're just <laughs> hilarious. They're just a lot of fun. Now I'm thinking I've been binging Scandal, the TV show Scandal. Truth. I did not watch it when it was originally out. Mm -hmm. So like I've been like 
I think it's I watched been, like I think it's been four gone, of those on Easter. Gone like ten years now, but yeah. When I woke up, and um, yeah, just like crappy stuff, like narrative TV, but like scandal, NCIS, NCIS. Just, <laughs> just like <laughs> stupid stuff. You yeah. know, it's like yeah, everyone in the CIA is angry. It's like okay, whatever. I love it. Yes, what are you planning on watching? I might get some movies in there. I might get some. I put a movie aside. I forget what it is now. Yeah. Yes, but um, yeah, it'll probably have Mila Kunis <laughs> or um, who else am I thinking? Kristen Wiig. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Amy Poehler or Tina Fey, perhaps. Well, you know, we, we're big fans of uh, Bad Moms. And that's just brilliant. <laughs> Joe says, so. tequila is my personality changer. Well, oh, where I was. Oh, well, so, oh, original Night Court is great. Yes. So, John, if I served you a shot of El Toro, it wouldn't change your personality. I'm just asking. So there we go. For a friend. We, yeah, we I tend to like... keep uh, El Himidor on hand because it's a really nice reposado for a great price. And most of them are not. Oh. So it's good to know. Original Night Court, Cheers, and Barney Miller. Barney Those Miller. are all great ones. Yeah. Barney Miller. I'm, I gotta, oh, I gotta look up a quote. Sorry, but um, Barney Miller. Wow, we used to watch that back in the day. I would watch that again right now. That's just one of those series. Okay. Like the so, Art Couple. Okay. I'm just like, I'm probably not going to watch Seinfeld because I've watched a lot of it, but I'm thinking of the Larry David quote about Seinfeld. They're like, um, no hugging, no learning. <laughs> I don't, don't want to do any learning. No, we're not going to do that kind of stuff. I don't want to do any learning. It's not that joke. We're not doing that. So. <laughs> Cuervo is not really tequila. Well. Well, if it doesn't have the 100% agave, it is. Yeah. Then. then it is about 60% tequila because a lot of tequila being sold in the market is cut the way that blended whiskey was back in the day. Mm. You can still buy blended whiskey. I don't know who would when you can buy a good bourbon. And I don't know who would buy tequila that's not 100% uh, agave when you can because it's made. But the fact is the demand for tequila oh, far geez, outstrips the supply. So some of it's been cut with the grain. Jesus, my father yeah. said that too. He was cut <laughs> Most cop work is boring. Oh, oh yeah. okay. All oh, right. Yeah. Most of what you do oh, as police bread. is mm. some really routine, dull stuff. Yeah. You know, it doesn't get exciting very often. When it does, it's too exciting. But yeah. Yeah, you, I feel like if you're a cop, you don't want. You don't want to. Like, it's exciting. You don't want it to get too exciting. Yeah, you know that's the thing. Same. But I hear it at your average day. I, I had a friend uh, I grew up with who actually joined the police force, and one day I happened to see his patrol car sitting there at the corner and I just drove up and rolled down the window and had a conversation. He's just like, yeah, it's pretty slow. So that was a boring night. <laughs> oh, John says, Barney Miller. It took me a long time to realize how much influence Jack Sue had on my sense of oh, humor. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's so good. Oh, he is, he so, is so good. So low key and deadpan. It's kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. Who did the theme to the, to the show? I forget who did Barney Miller. It's a great theme. Oh, I I have it playing in my head now. I, I kind of yeah. feel like the brilliant corners would have done a great version of that. Oh, Eric says my weird therapy is watching scare prank videos. Okay. Oh wow. I'm not gonna judge. Well, you know, it's just slightly sadistic. I'm not. I'm not telling you anything, but you know, it's what, dime. It's, I get it. Is. it. Yeah. Yeah. What it is. I, I watch it. all sorts of junk. I will not judge anybody for their junk. <laughs> exactly. You don't judge. You cannot judge my. You can't judge my junk. We do, not, we do not drink junk. junk. We're drinking high quality materials here. Not judge we your recommend that for you. Junk. That's part of what we do here. Junk. When we when we make something and it's like that was terrible, we say don't do it. Exactly. Dang. Okay. <laughs> yeah, seriously, like Barney Miller is a great team. I'm trying to I gotta look down who did that. Wait, here we go. And I know that like uh it's not Dave Grusin oh! and it's not Errol um, says we watch shows like The Rival, man. I laughed and said, how many people does Lucas McCain have to put down in his life? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. You know what Chuck Connor says? <laughs> All of them. You know? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, it's a sad oh, thing. Yeah. Jack Sue died. It's, too cool. it's not Bob James either. He, he did Wait, the theme on. to I'm Taxi, gonna, just... which had a different name when he did it. 
as a matter of fact, but it became a very classic theme. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Who do we do? Who do we do? Who did it? Uh, Daniel Kane Orchestra? No. No, no, no. no. Take a look at that first. Who played, who played the theme? That first question there. Let's find this out here. Alan Ferguson? Co-composed. Alan Ferguson. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, so he was a big studio guy. Okay. No big surprise. All you need to know about the Barney Miller thing. There's so, a website for this. There We're is looking indeed. at it. I'm just going to drop the link because there you go. there's no way. I'm All gonna... you could possibly need to know about this. So, by Do the way, we need to know that much about it. The, the, the show itself was produced by the. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. John says Jack Elliott and Alan Ferguson had there to look up. Yeah. There you go. Jack Elliott. Oh, the sister keeps scaring the brother. Oh. Uh. He was the third baseman for the Cubs? Who? I'm missing something here. I know. And then top it all off with, with some cop rock. That's a good idea, Eric. I, there you I go. might get behind that. John's brother Joe is a big fan of cop rock. Yes. It was too funky to be Mike Post. <laughs> Truth. Yeah, not Mike Post. He's he's very straightforward. Da, 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 da. Very uh very like sheet music y. Sheet music -y. Sort of sheet music y. Kind of, kind of sheet music -y. Well, all right. So this has been a good couple hours plus and we've had some fantastic okay. commentary here. As usual, uh many of you support us on Patreon. Thank you. If you don't, you see a link at the bottom of your screen right there. You can do it too. You can get your chair red if you want to join at the box wine oh level. But uh, even $5 a month would get you fun stuff. We still have product available. Got our fantastic. This is not our towel. <laughs> Screw that. We have a product available. That's an old Hana towel. This is our, our towel. These are fantastic. We have them in magenta as well. Let us know. We still have wine glasses available. We just sold one recently to a uh, fan of the show. These are great. It's hard to see them, but that's going to draw. And we have our record. That's how to support us. And then, of course, we have uh, some of our friends like Amy who are like, I find weird products and send them to you. That supports us we materially. Can, we can provide you with your our address. That supports us materially. You probably know your address already. We can provide you with our address if you need it. Let us know. Any questions we have <laughs> okay. not answered today, so please let us know. Thank you so much, everyone. Have... Patreon people, you will be getting your April benefits. As usual, Friday. we have veered into many topics. But the patron, patrons will do Oh, it. John and just found full personnel. Okay. John I'm gonna, Allen. I'm going to take a uh, screenshot. Oh, great. Okay, excellent. There we go. Oh, oh Ken. Ken. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Ken. Hey, Ken. Good to see you. I'm glad we at least got to say hi. Yes. Well, you know, that's just, you know. Oh. But the fact is we're saying hi now. Oh, Julie. Yep. Yes. Oh, I love it. Just like the yes. Rolling Stones, we love you. So. Oh, I love it. It's so nice. Please. We, th we thank everybody who has been supporting us through Patreon, et cetera, and uh, by, via or other just by showing up. means. And or if you, if you show up. up and join the convo. Sending us your music. It is materially supporting us. Sending us candy and oh, whatnot. Yeah. yeah. We've seen it. Yep. Yeah. Big fun stuff. We love you all. Okay, kids. Okay. This all is right. great stuff. Don't forget there is an eclipse happening on Tuesday next week. Is that right? Monday. Graphite. I'm trying to remember. Monday. Look it up. I I can't do that right now, but it's easy. It's right there up on the inter interwebs. The full boob I'll interwebs. Look it up. But you know it's gonna be if, if you have any uh like you know possibility of seeing some of this, uh, remember um don't look at it, but you can always use the uh indirect method and see what's going on. I say just look at the shadows. The shadows get really weird. It's really fun during an eclipse. Yeah. Monday. Thank Monday. you, Julie. Monday, Monday, Monday. Thank you. Monday, yes. Monday, Monday. Tuesday will be far too late. But it's always great to see, like, you know, when the moon conjuncts the soul. Moon beats sun every time. <laughs> I love it. And uh, it's always, we never get a, a total. We always get a partial. So you mm -hmm. take a look at the shadows mm -hmm. and you'll see, like, little crescent rolls everywhere. It turns the shadows. You see what's happening. It's really weird. Uh, and it's a fun thing. Okay. A total eclipse would get very dark. I'm going to be in the city. But... but yeah. So will I. 
Okay, we're we'll, gonna, we'll we're, figure it out. We're going to check it out as long as check it doesn't it rain, which it usually does. <sighs> but then we'll find out. So that's it for what we got. Any questions, send them to us. Anybody still have questions about uh, the drinks, um, good party ideas, turntables, send them to us. We'll find out what's going on. And as always, we're so thankful you could be here with us for a couple hours on a Wednesday of your time. And we're glad to take our time to do fun things for you. And if you have some whack drink that your uncle enjoyed in the 60s, but you know what's in it, or you don't know what's in it, let us know. We'll find out and we'll make it for you. And we'll say, terrible. Don't do that. So as always, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. And as always, no matter where you go, and no matter what you do, we will see you soon. Good night.